Hey, welcome back. Ready for the giveaway? Maps Powerlift. Today's giveaway is a powerlifting based program. Follow Maps Powerlift, increase your bench press, your deadlift, and your squat. And here's how you can enter to win free access. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, subscribe to this channel, and click on notifications. Turn that on. If we like your comment, it's the best comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to Maps Powerlift. One more thing before we get to this incredibly awesome episode. We have a sale going on right now. Two of our most popular workout programs, MAPS HIT and MAPS SPLIT. So MAPS HIT is high intensity interval training. MAPS SPLIT is a traditional bodybuilding style split workout. Both of them 50% off all month long in the month of December. So if you're interested, head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code DEC50. So that's DEC50 with no space for that massive discount. All right, here comes the show. Look, aesthetics tends to follow performance, but performance doesn't always follow aesthetics. In other words, if you train to move better, you're probably going to look better. If you train to look better, you won't always move better. Discuss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It is. It's one of those things. It's like, um, you know, if you work out to improve mobility and function and control and strength and stamina, what typically follows that is a balanced, symmetrical, strong-looking physique. The other isn't always true. There's a lot of people that train hard for aesthetics, and they sacrifice movement because in the pursuit of aesthetics. And then because they continue to sacrifice movement, they start to get injuries, they move poorly, well, and they slowly start to lose their aesthetics. You can get hyper-focused on certain areas of your body and you know really bring them up, but... Uh, once we keep like focusing on segmenting the body and uh, not considering the whole, it's going to affect the how everything performs together harmoniously. And so that's that's something that you always got to consider that in terms of like when we're in a certain phase too long, especially in just focusing on aesthetics. It's uh, how how can I now apply uh, this these muscles that I've acquired and how, how are they functioning as opposed to just how big and, um, you know, veiny and, and vascular they look. Yeah. You know, what's funny is that when I was younger, I remember, obviously my goal was I wanted to get big, right? I wanted to build muscle. And then, and this is one piece of performance. Performance uh, encompasses like everything that has to do with how you move and stuff. But I remember um, these power lifters as I was a kid, I was a young kid and they told me, you want to get big. They said, if you get, if you just get stronger, you're going to get bigger. Don't worry about anything else. Just get stronger right now, and you're going to build that muscle. And I did. I just focused. And it was like, uh, God, it was that summer. I think I gained like 15 pounds of muscle because I, I listened to what they said. I said, okay, I'm just going to get strong and see what happens. And it blew away the results I had before where I was just focused on, you know, oh, I got to make myself look a particular way. You know, it made a big difference. I don't know if I fully agree. I mean, you're implying that if you train like an athlete, you could look like an athlete. Not necessarily, but yeah, let me, what... well, let me put it this way. If you only train for performance, you're probably going to get a great deal of aesthetics. If you only train for aesthetics, think of all the people you know that's why that I don't, only that, train for looks. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. That's why I don't agree with that. I think that there's a lot of kids, there's a lot of uh, adults too that are tr training like athletes in hopes that they're going to look like athletes that never get to that place because their diet's so fucked and or their performance training sucks. Well, okay. So, Di all well, things performance being, in athletics, yeah. I, I would agree with athletic training wise, but performance wise in terms of like, you know, uh, compound lifts and uh, considering more of a holistic uh, you know, functional type of yes. strength training versus, yeah, because I do agree. People that try to, to to do these explosive movements like athletes and everything, it doesn't always present, you know, the greatest physique. And also you get a lot of issues and problems in that direction because that's the extreme of, you know, what we're talking about. So it's, but in terms of the opposite end of that, you know, I, I would consider if that's your entire focus is just to build up your aesthetics like you you know you may be diminishing a lot of the quality of your movement as a whole yeah that also, i agree with yeah and so also I, I agree that training like uh training like to look a certain way more often than not leads to 
poor movement. I mean, right. a lot, a lot of uh, bodybuilders, uh, including myself, when I went through the competing years, uh, some of my worst uh, movement patterns came from training like a meathead because all I cared about was how I looked, not how I performed. And so you neglect a lot of the exercises and movements that. Uh, that helped with that, and I wasn't doing it because it didn't it didn't give me the biggest bang for my buck when it came to building my shoulders or my chest. So I I agree with the statement on that side, but I I I don't, you, I don't look. You got to the context has to okay. Obviously, all things being equal, right? You can't have a crappy diet, train a particular way, expect to look better. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is all things being created equal. If you if you always are focused on looks, eventually, and I'm talking about longevity speaking. Eventually, you're going to lose your ability to do certain exercises. You develop aches and pains. Your move will start. To, your movement quality will start to decline. And what follows that? Well, now you start to lose your aesthetics. Versus taking care of your ability to move, working on ranges of motion, doing exercises that have the most bang for the buck. That's what I mean by when I say performance. So you know, I'm glad, I'm glad you said what you said, Justin, because it's not just aesthetics. When I'm saying performance, I mean it in the general holistic sense. Right? Yeah, and I and I think too, you got to consider like objective and subjective type of feedback and and how you're how you're evaluating all of that, right? So you know, there's a lot more objective type of data in terms of like, is my strength increasing? I could see that uh, when I'm training more for performance. Uh, you know, versus like, am I, am I gaining the kind of size and shape yeah. and, uh, it, you know, like there's a lot more. <sighs> well, the subjective. Well, yeah, my, my point is this, there's a, there's a hell of a lot more people that are interested in what your professional athletes are doing and are trying to emulate what they're doing and that are failing and not getting the results they want than the people that are trying to emulate what bodybuilders are doing. There's a much smaller group of people that look up to bodybuilders and train that way than there are kids and people that look at professional athletes like Tom Brady and want to know what is he doing diet-wise, what is he doing training-wise, I'm going to follow that. Yeah, that, no, no, so it's, that's the wrong yeah, routine, I can, obviously. I agree you, with You that. still got to train right for your body. I know, but I'm, I'm just thinking that that statement that you're saying is- Is meant is, to be- is, is meant to be a statement and then we talk about it is, so this is, is a good part of the conversation can be can be true but i i think that you're missing a bigger portion of people who you're communicating to because somebody hears performance and athletic training and they think train like an athlete that's what people hear they hear that they don't think your guys's textbook definition of it if you do you're way off okay they don't how think do you that how do you train like an athlete do you copy another athlete's routine most people yes no, that's not what you do we, well that's my point though exactly that's my no no and that's good i'm glad you're saying that it, you you still have to train appropriately for your body so this is all going to be very individual so this doesn't mean follow someone else's routine that's inappropriate. You're going to follow a pro NFL player's routine, which is very specific mm -hmm. to that individual, what they're trying to accomplish, their history, their body, their 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 position on the field, like all that stuff. Well, that's wrong. But if you train yourself and your focus is movement and performance, you're more likely to get the longevity with your aesthetics than if it's only always on aesthetics. This is true I'd for even diet. Though, also, your influencers and your IG people and your magazine cover people and like not just bodybuilders, but you know all these like aesthetically good looking people. Like they apply their routine, which is completely wrong. Uh, yeah. Yes, I mean there's no doubt it's on both sides. But yeah. when you think of general population of people out there, sports it has such a huge influence on kids and people and the way they train that's why that's why they always go get some athlete and they put them on the front cover or some movie sells, star right. yeah and it sells and it sells to millions not a few hundred people yeah. very you walk up to 10 people on the street randomly and ask them to name you know five bodybuilders and they won't be able to tell you but name five professional athletes you want to look like and i bet you they can do that you're it's right just, you're right but i think it's a mistake to take uh performance and say it's it's how this professional athlete uh, plays. That's what performance is. No, here's what I'm talking about. It's for performance for my grandma is, hey, grandma, let's see if we can get you to walk down the street versus just halfway up. Yeah, you've improved your performance. Or my dad, hey, dad, I know your back hurts when you bend over. So to improve your performance, let's see if we can get you to bend over further. Can you lift this without pain? Yeah, can you lift? Like That's what I mean by performance is your ability to perform better, move better, better ranges of motion, less pain. Uh, stronger, more connected. If you improve upon those metrics and keep that in focus, you're going to get longevity and you're going to get, of course, all things being equal, you'll get a great deal of aesthetics. On the other side, if I just, if it's like, oh, I'm just going to focus on my weight. I'm just going to focus on how ripped I get or how, mm. how I look in the mirror, which Justin made a great point. So subjective. 
if you have any type of body image issue, which most people do, you know, hold a little bit of water, hold a, you know less water. Uh, you know, lighting is different. I don't feel so good about myself today. Boy, is my opinion going to change drastically based on that? I mean, how many times have you had a client look at a picture of themselves five years prior and say, "Oh my god, I looked amazing," but I remember in that picture I thought I looked so terrible. Mm -hmm. Versus performance, which is very objective. I was able to squat more weight, or I was able to. Uh, do this with an inch deeper position with more control and stability. Or my form looks so much better. Well, right? we all agree that that's the mo most healthy approach towards fitness. Period is 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 looking at your performance, how you perform in the gym, opposed to how you look. Like totally, you know, paying attention to how you look. It's it's a hard one, right? Because you you want you don't want to tell people, hey, you you can't. Uh, have a goal to look better or you can't have a goal to get right. abs you can't like you don't want to tell because that's the majority of what they're coming in there for right yeah uh, you just I think the idea is to just to warn them where that potentially could lead if that is your main focus and it's a much healthier approach to to look at movement uh, over that but I think performance for a lot of people just translates to ath athletic uh, ability and I think that athletes are the first thing that people look to I think it's one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest problems that are in the space is that you've got professional athletes that people aspire to be like whether they they like them as a person or they love their team and they like the way they look and so they try and follow that and they think that this oh this is performance this is what yeah. they what mind pump meant when they said train for performance is to do that yeah you know along those lines the extremes uh, are usually not the best and I don't care what pursuit you're after right? right so if I look at the extreme performance in terms of strength I may look at you know, a 350 pound power lifter, yeah. uh, you know, or a lift strong man. Yeah. Or a strong man. Right. And that is extreme performance. But I think in those extreme cases, you lose a lot, you know, of the other stuff, right. An extreme endurance totally. runner or extreme muscle hypertrophy or any of that stuff. So I, I think this is in the context of overall general and for that individual. And if, if your goal, like I used to tell us, this took me a long time to figure out, but when I got to the point where I remember where I said, Oh, you know, to my clients, I said, you know what? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to the gym and practice these exercises. Just get better at these exercises, and then the results are going to follow. Don't worry about hammering your legs. Get better at squatting, for example. Don't worry about, you know, blasting your shoulders. I want you to get really good at overhead pressing. I want you to get really good, you know, at doing these suspension trainer Ws or whatever. And when they would do that and they'd go in with that focus, it was like everything else fell into place versus when they would go to the gym and say, oh, I got to look better. I got to, mo. Oh, I want to hammer my quads or I want to hammer my glutes. Which well, it just seems that, that with that mentality, the goalpost just keeps moving. And like you said, like you, it, that's why sometimes you'd like to take your client back and, be, and, yeah. and show them, like, look how far you've, you've got. You know? And like, a lot of times they have to like visually see that because they just look at themselves currently at where they're at and where the flaws are. Is it's always like looking at their body in terms of where the flaws are, and it's it just never seems like it's achievable. Yeah, it, it, it isn't because they're not addressing the root cause. And that's why the goalpost keeps moving because it's really an insecurity issue. It's not really a ten pound or twenty pound. There's nothing issue. that'll fill that hole. That's right. Yeah. It's it's a it's a bottomless pit because you think you look at yourself in the mirror and you go, oh, I hate the way I look. I just need to lose thirty pounds. You lose the thirty pounds, and then you're in the the boat you're saying right now, and that's because. The, the problem wasn't the 30 pounds. You didn't address the real problem first, and so it'll just it'll just keep moving that goalpost. You know, it's funny. I was talking yeah. to Arthur. So Arthur Brooks, good friend of mine, he's also an expert on happiness. So he, you know, he, he's the one that looks at all these studies. He's a professor. He teaches about this. And he studies all these different metrics that contribute to happiness and physical appearance and looks, right? A lot of people think, oh, my God, if I'm beautiful, if I have the perfect body, I'm going to be so much happier. What he actually finds in the literature, and this is well studied, is let's say you're in the middle. Let's say on a scale of one to five, you're average good looks. And then you like dedicate your life to looking better. I mean, you train, you eat right, you get plastic surgery, you get on anabolic steroids and hormones, and you do the whole thing, and you go from a five to a 10. Your happiness goes up like a percent. It's like it has such a small impact on your overall happiness. He says it's, a, it's like one of the worst investments of time, if that's all it is, your goal, in terms of making yourself happier. Now, in, in terms of like improving your health, then there's a big impact, right? Oh, I feel better. I have more energy, which gives me more time to do things that I love. I'm not as sick as often. Then there's huge returns when it comes to happiness. So it's really interesting. And they find this with money too, by the way. Yeah. And the studies on money are very interesting. 
once you meet, and there was a there was a number that they came up with, but it's an old number. I'm it's sure seventy it's, something thousand. Yeah. yeah, it's it's old though. I'm sure it's yeah. a little higher now because like, it covers inflation. your survival needs and all that kind of baseline. Uh, yeah, I issues. think I think it was seventy something thousand. It's lower so. middle class. Yeah, what it is. It's like lower middle class once you reach that. So that obviously it changes on the state yeah. you're once in. you're not worrying about food and yeah. rent and electricity and you've got your basic necessities. Once your basic necessities are covered, you can go out to dinner every once in a while when you want to. You don't. You're not late on any bills. You have a car and everything like that. The that is a huge like not having that and then having that makes a big difference. It's life changing, yeah, right? For that, sure. that can be life changing. But then from there up, it's like just like percentages, very yeah. very small. And the higher you go, the less it matters. Like you're a millionaire to a billionaire, it's like. And I would right. even make the case that um, it, it it potentially even gets worse because your expectations are that when I reach a quarter million a year, I'm going to be happy. Oh shit, I got there. I'm not happy. When I reach a half a million a year, and what ends up happening is it's this never ending chase. So you probably get discouraged or frustrated with that. It never ends up feeling like, that void. In, in, unless you're applying like consistent uh, gratitude disciplines, right? And you're, you're focused on like positive and good things that are happening in conjunction with that. It's like, otherwise, if you're still in that mentality of like, well, I'm not here yet and I, and I don't have this yet. And it just becomes it, like this addiction. It's such an interesting, interesting dance and it's uh i mean i'm still working on this right mm -hmm. how do you how do you stay um motivated uh to keep pursuing like growth in business or financial yeah. right like I, and you, you guys know that i'm i'm why i always get like this right where i get frustrated or i'm because i want more i want us to do more or whatever right. but then also recognizing look what we've done yeah. and look how happy everyone is so it and then I also don't want to find myself getting complacent. Yes. Where, yeah. you know, like it's so it's like this that fine dance of like, how do I stay present and have have gratitude, but then at the same time too strive to push so, to do more. Again, these are it's very reflective of your fitness state. Yeah, totally. sim similar conversations I had with uh with again with Arthur Brooks. I love his information on this. And there's a couple things with that. One is the if you're doing something that has a deeper sense of purpose and meaning. Then you'll get you'll you'll derive a tremendous amount of value out of it. So in other words, if your business is if what you do in your business, you really feel like I would do this even if I made way less money, and I really really like the people that I'm helping, and it's making a huge impact. So I want to get better at that. And the side effect of that is you keep making more money, but the driver really is that meaning and purpose aspect. Yeah. Then you'll keep growing, and you'll side effect of that. I hundred percent. I hundred percent think that is the mm -hmm. secret to scaling a massive company is. Always going back to probably what motivated you at the beginning, yes. which was the you know providing value to somebody it's, it's else. The why? And so as as it gets more complex and there's more moving parts and there's more money coming in from these different places, is to not get distracted by milestones financially, a dollar amount, but rem reminding yourself that oh, this was how can I look back, go to the very beginning again, and go like okay, look at everything we're doing. How do I provide even more value for those people that are already? How do I stay us? on this meaning? Path? Yeah, like, like stay is. focused on and on on and adding value to their life, knowing that it'll inevitably scale up yeah. and it will it'll produce more. And then income. the other thing with money that I was going to say that I thought was very interesting is when people make more money and use it to give themselves more time, there's a much larger uh, payback than when they use it for other reasons. So it, so. So, for example, let's say you have a bunch more money and you're like, you know, I want to get this crazy stereo system for the house and whatever. Or, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hire a gardener so that now I have an extra hour every day to do other things. They find that uh, opening up time for yourself gives you much more uh, payback in terms of value than like buying things. And the other thing is growth. So like, okay, yeah. I'll do this to learn the skill or to grow some, you know, my my awareness or whatever you're into, they also see that that you know gives you a much. Well, more I really effect. think one of them is for others, and one of them is for you, right? The 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 tangible things sure gives you momentarily pleasure, but it's really to show everybody else. Look at my nice car. True. Look at this nice things that I can afford. When in reality, it's really not making your life that much better. Versus doing something that frees up, like having a house cleaner that, okay, if I clean the house on average two to three hours a week, every week, having somebody who now takes it off my plate, I now have three mm -hmm. hours that I could, you know, allocate towards spending time with my wife or my child or my fitness or reading or improving or traveling, doing something like, I think that's the, that's the key to that is focusing on those things. Yeah. What, can you guys think back to some of like the, the best things you've ever spent 
money on? Do you guys have any? Well, you, we already the, the house cleaner one. So I I remember when I was. Isn't that funny? Yeah, mm-hmm. I was. My, my did you go through a guilt process with that? No, I didn't go through. A, I didn't go through a guilt process because I, I'm the numbers math guy, right? For sure. So right away, I oh, let me I, guess. You did this. You did it. while the housekeeper's working. Right. I can make this much more money. Yeah. By work. <laughs> so I, it was. It was. It was really. It was easy for me to defend when people thought, you know, oh my God, you're being lazy or like you. Yeah. Like so, I had a condo that was 1,700 square feet. My first house I bought. Uh, so not a lot to clean, right? Yeah. But I had a house cleaner. I had a house cleaner as as almost as soon as I had a house, I, I made sure that I could afford to do that, which back then I think it was like, I think I paid 250 bucks a month and I had a cleaner in there three times, three times a month, I think, to come clean my place. And people thought that was absurd. But I, I knew how much money I made per hour training clients. And back then I was a fitness manager. So I could, you know, factor in my time and say, okay, well, my time's worth X amount of dollars. Yeah. Um, I, I could either want, and what we have, we had the luxury too of having a job, which not everybody has this, right? Like back when we were trainers, if I literally wanted to make more money, I could work an extra day that week and train four right. more clients. Like I had that flexibility and I could also say, I don't want to. So I, I could dictate, you know, mm-hmm. four more hours of training clients, which would result in, you know, a few hundred more dollars at least. Well, that one day of me training a couple more clients would cover the cost of me having a house cleaner all month. And, and, and I love doing that. Like I love mm-hmm. training clients. I love, I love making money in my, in my job. So why wouldn't I want to go spend a couple more hours doing that? I did not love doing dishes and doing t- cleaning toilets and bathtubs. I did not have any enjoyment doing that. Yeah. So it was I, really easy for me to, to, to justify that. Now, later on, I, I found ways to really uh, understand it on a whole deeper level with like, and that's, I think the, the having a wife and kid and mm-hmm. seeing us being able to, now I have this time that I can spend with Katrina or Max and now it's extremely valuable to me. Yeah, totally. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, same for me was the time thing uh, or investing in, uh, you know, that time and hanging out with people that tend to make me grow. Like I love hanging out with you guys because that, uh, that happens a lot for me to just through hanging out with you guys. And then travel was a big one that I didn't really yeah. understand till I actually till I met Jessica. She's a big travel person, and when we started dating, we would do these trips, and I'd get so much value out of them. Like mm-hmm. I didn't have anything I could hold besides pictures. Like I, I took this thing that I paid for, but when I think about them, they bring me so much more value than anything else that I have spent money on. That's equivalent, you know, cost or whatever. Yeah, mine was very similar to that in terms of experiences and like um, spending money to make sure the family dynamic uh like we we were all like doing something together like a, a memorable thing like whether it was even hiking somewhere exotic or we we're you know in a different location i i'm really you know big into nature and so like to 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 make sure like i was spending money in that direction to make sure we all had you know good connection with each other like lots of good conversations came out of that as well um, you know, I'm still working on like some of the stuff in terms of letting things go, uh, house wise. And I have like hired people to help me now. And it's been game changing in terms of now freeing myself up to just focus on what's going on in the kids' lives and then taking mm-hmm. Courtney out to, that was another big thing was like scheduling dates that I'll, I that just started I'll, doing that. Yeah. That's a big I'll one. spend money on and, and, and I probably do it more now than ever before because otherwise, if I'm not intentional about that, I don't have those kind of meaningful interactions uh, if I don't schedule it out. It's just the nature of yeah. where we're at. Yeah. If, if people, and I saw this with clients um, that as I got better as a trainer, you know, I would, I'd have clients that would be with me for 10 years and they would, inv- I mean, I wasn't cheap. So they were investing some of them, some of them I would train couples, not together either separately. And then they bring me their kids. So these people are investing thousands of dollars a month on exercise. And they would always tell me how they work their budget to fit this in because of the value they would get back uh, from the money they invested in terms of how they felt and lack of pain. And, you know, this is such a, uh, you know, relieves my stress. And I think if people understood that really, because I had this conversation, I was on a podcast the other day and, and we were talking about how we can really convince people or, or communicate to people the real value of fitness and health. And I told the story of, I told you guys before, of, I was at this Christmas dinner. It was uh, my ex-wife's company. So it was like a tech company. So there was no fitness people at the table and we're all introducing ourselves. And of course, when they know I'm a trainer, same, it's always happens. You're a fitness person. You're with a bunch of non-fitness people. As soon as the food comes out, everybody's apologizing. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm going to eat some of this bread. Okay. And they make jokes about it. Right. And it's like, I'm used to it. 
Well, I remember this lady had a few couple, uh, a few drinks of alcohol or a few glasses of wine. And she goes, you know, I used to have a friend who worked out all the time and ate right and did everything right. And then she died of breast cancer when she was, you know, 50 something years old. So I'm just going to enjoy my life. And I remember thinking, man, people really have it wrong. You know, and I don't think the fitness industry has helped, by the way. I think it's actually contributed to this problem. But people, the average person thinks that working out and eating in a way that makes you healthy it's like a chore is not yeah. enjoying your life it right. actually takes away from your quality of life which is exactly the opposite of what it does and i remember sitting there going man we got to really do a better job of communicating this to people because if people think not being healthy is enjoying their life we have done a shitty job right. of communicating what what health and fitness does and so and that's huge. I mean, if people really knew, you would not have Planet Fitness gyms charging nine dollars a month and nobody, sh you know, signing up. The same people spending, you know, two hundred dollars a month on their cell phone bills. How speaking of them, how are they doing? Have you guys looked crushing. to see? Are they crushing right now? Yeah. They're they're getting up there with like one of the most valuable chains right now, aren't yeah. they? They they really tapped into that model where mm. uh, you you pay, and this is what it is, and they tapped into human psychology. Look that up, Doug. Most most profitable fitness chains. I want to see. I want to see where they. They're up right. there, man. And I, it's like. They've tapped into the psychology where it's like, okay, uh, oh, I'm motivated. I need to work out. Or, oh, my God, I'm fat. I need to do something. Then they go and they sign up. And it's and the free pizza, by the way, works into this psychology because they think, I'm paying 10 bucks a month. I'm not going. At least I get free pizza. That covers the cost. <laughs> or, you know what? It's so cheap. Why would yeah. I cancel? Which I is really go. the evaluation of it at the end. It's like, I haven't really used it. But, you know, I might use it. And it's just at that price point where they'll just, oh, you know what? Just in case, I'll yeah. keep it. Do you know how many? Wow. How Anytime Fitness is number one. Well, no, this is for franchises. But no, I think in total. No, there's like their Planet Fitness is number three. No, I know. But it says they're best franchises to buy. So I think they're calculating it from that perspective risk. Oh, and yeah. I, I didn't even know that planet fitness was a franchise. It'll, it does, fr it does franchise some of their gyms, obviously. I, I, I didn't know. Huh. I didn't know yeah, that. I, didn't I know thought that. it was all privately it was owned corporate, too. Corporate, yeah. Is yeah. that basically what it's saying, Doug? It's not talking about how profitable the company is itself. No, what I'm seeing here is how much it costs for the franchise fee and then how much it costs to actually get started. And then so, probably how much they have make on average or whatever. Yeah. The orange so, theory number see. two. Yeah. They there are royalty fees of seven percent of total gross monthly. Wow! Yeah, that's a total lot. Total gross. That's a yeah, hefty chunk. Wow. And wow. open opening one can cost over four million dollars. Yeah. yeah. Wow, four million. Yeah. Holy shit! That's you know, I had I had a, I just had a conversation with a family friend who wanted to open a brick and mortar fitness facility, and it sounded like they were asking my advice. I wasn't sure if they were asking my advice or if they were trying to see if I'd want to invest or something like that. And I had this whole conversation. I said, that brick and mortar business is tough, man. I said, mm -hmm. you're going to, a lot of capital, mm -hmm. a lot of risk, and you're limited with how you can scale because you have one location. You got to do another one. You got to do a lot of capital. That's how, it's a, it's I a mean, beast. kudos to people who run very profitable brick and mortar fitness spaces. Because that's a, that's a I tough think one. you're okay so long as you you go in with the right expectations, right? So I always, when someone tells me they're going to, I always ask, what are they, what are they seeking? Like, what 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 drives you to want to do that? That's a good question. And if you say things to me like, what are your I've always just wanted in? to have my own gym that I come into and 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 work out yeah. and my fan and, and something close, and I dictate my hours, and it just gives me so much joy. Like, if it, if I'm hearing stuff like that, I'm cool. Like, or if they all think of it as a, a great business move to make money, it's it, that's a terrible reason to get into it and the truth is most likely you won't most likely you'll make less money than you're probably making right now working for somebody else at a gym than you will having your own place but if that doesn't matter to you say you you've got the income that you need or you already have made the money you want to make or you have the things that you want to have and so you don't have ambitions to make more then sure go yeah. do it I it's, think a it's a passion a and uh, value driven business and if you don't have a deep passion for fitness yeah. and you open a new gym you're going to tank because you need to have that passion has to carry you through the, the first six months when you're in the red and when you're out there trying to drum up business and do the whole thing and working 12 hours a day. Yeah. Not going to happen. So uh, on the previous podcast, I brought up uh, the whole six finger digit. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, oh, that uh, try to call it. Uh, yeah. So somebody actually sent me an article. I guess there's there's a player, a defensive player, linebacker for Kentucky. Uh, who has six fingers in one hand, and, and it's like fully, um, you, can, you can fully articulate it and use it, and he says it is a bit of an advantage even to have. J.J. Weaver, I think is his name, 
But I, I had never actually seen that uh, in sports. Somebody had like six fingers because I keep thinking about that. I think the biggest advantage would probably be in basketball, wouldn't you think? Or well, baseball? remember we we speculate on this. I thought rock climbing would be one. Of oh the, yeah, yeah, rock climbing for <laughs> sure. Arm yeah, wrestling that makes sense. Yeah, I would think arm wrestling because you have leverage. An extra one to. Oh yeah, yeah that last bit just. Yeah, doot. yeah, you have a crazy amount <laughs> just of, hooking in. So my question is, if it's art, if it articulates and everything, are they stronger? I wonder if there's any studies on like. A general grip strength or grip would, stamina? I would imagine so because of the surface area and just the the, the, the added bit of mus musculature uh, that they could organize together, you know, in their in their hand. Here's because another, you'd have one extra. Finger. And here's another question: What muscle uh, flexes and extends that digit? Is it a, is it the same muscle? So in other words, is the tendon connected to right. the same muscle that operates the pinky? Does it have its own? Yeah, I'd like to see the anatomy of it. I, I'm not too certain, but it looks natural too, which trips me out. I know you when you showed the examples before, you have to like really look. You have to count to go like, oh wow, shit, that's there's six on there because at first glance you can't you can't really tell. Yeah. Oh man, get slapped in the face with one of those. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just wrote, you just reminded me. I watched last night. Have you guys seen this? Just popped up. I, I think it's pretty new uh, on Netflix. The Alpinist. The Alpinist, A L P N I S. Oh, so it's the I same a glimpse of that. It's the same people who did Don Wall, mm -hmm. right? And uh, oh, and, it's like Alpine. Yeah, but okay. it's Alpinist is actually like a term. Okay. So yeah, so these so they climb mountains. like uh like uh, ice structures and uh, glaciers. Yeah, or? like yeah. yeah. So that's oh, they that. yeah some of the crazy ones. So there's there's uh when um when Tim Ferriss interviewed uh what's the guy's name that did Free Solo? I keep um, oh, there gosh. it is right there. Alex. Yeah, oh, Alex. Hanuman, Hanuman? Yeah. Alex like that. Hano or something. Yeah, I forget. I forget his last name. Right. Yeah. So Alex was on on Tim Ferriss like years ago. Oh, so you can watch this now. Yeah, you can oh, watch. You can watch, you can watch it now. It was really good. It was really good. And t on Tim Ferriss's show, Alex, they, he asked him. He says, "Well, who do you? Who are you watching? Who do you think is because he's Alex is considered like the best yeah. out there for as far as like solo climbing." Yeah. And he drops this kid's name. This kid's twenty three years old. And the stuff that he's scaling and doing is insane. And this whole thing, they follow him for two years. I don't want to ruin the show because there's a lot that happens in it, but it's definitely Have worth Have you guys watch. ever seen the video of, there's huh. these two climbers, they're like ice climbers, and they're climbing a glacier. So it's a massive glacier, and they're scaling one of the walls, and there's like a boat that's filming them. And then the glacier starts to tip. Oh my god! And one guy climbs around, and the other guy kind of gets trapped, and it fucking flips in the ocean. Have you guys seen that? He, no. he was apparently did he fall survived. with it. He survived. I think he did. Yeah, he survived. Everything was cool, but terrifying, <sighs> terrifying to see because glaciers at some point. I've read that they'll do that. They'll flip or tip, and you ain't stopping that thing. This is, a, you know, oh, no. thousands so of going. tons. So yeah. what's crazy about this kid is he goes after, like, okay, so t you, I guess there's- So you watch the whole thing? Yeah, I watch oh, the whole okay. thing. And I don't, I don't want to share too much. I'll give you little things though that's so impressive about what he does. Is like, there's like uh, ice climbing, then there's rock climbing, and there's like like different categories. And he's chosen like some of the most difficult uh, mountains in the world that combine all three. So he's got to climb up the mountain with his different his different gear that he's got to switch on the right. side of the mountain. So, so you're like spikes. Yeah, he's got his he spikes for his ice, ice shoes, but yeah. you don't want to be carrying all these handles and spikes while you're trying to do rock. So wow. you got to switch the shoes out and, and just crazy. Why? Gnarly. Because it's Dude, hard. Doug, Doug he, pull up this video. He broke can. all kinds of records. This is, yeah. this is why I've seen another one, but this one's pretty cool too. Look at this. <laughs> so this is an iceberg that flips on the people climbing it. Oh, okay. So it's short. It's not like I thought. Oh, I, was, I mean, it's, I, I it's, was picturing like a, it's a big ass. It's still a big ass gl glacier, right? Or or you know, ice cube in the ocean. <laughs> uh, so I mean, this thing's going to be thousands of. Uh, I'm sure. I don't know, thousands of pounds at least, or if not more. Maybe you can fast forward a little bit, Doug. To the these, this there. is the one though, right here. This is one. Yeah, this is one. I saw this one too. So these guys float up to it, right, with their boat. Then they climb up on it, and then <laughs> and the guy. You know, the, the, their buddy on the boat kind of floats away. And then, the, yeah, the, he's like, see you then guys the, later. The, this, yeah, iceberg or whatever decides to flip, dude. It's so just watch. like the whole thing starts to turn. Yeah, dude, watch. It's terrifying, bro. If I, well, I would, it's big, but it's not that. It's like a massive boulder size, basically, on the top. Well, I mean, it's huge. Now, I uh, wonder uh, below how well, far it goes. They were scaling down right now. Did they already go to the top? Is that what, why is he going away? I, I have no idea why. This like, is the oh, one. Oh, look, 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 look. <laughs> yeah. look. Oh, no. oh, oh, shit. Oh, they both oh, eat it, Oh, shit. Look at that, dude. Aside. Oh, my God. Oh, look at him. He drops the camera. Oh, shit. Yeah, no thanks, dude. Wow. No wow. thanks. You have to, you know, they all have that it's same sketchy. thing in common, though, with the, like, 
the what it's it's the connection of the frontal lobe or whatever 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 they like just don't feel yeah they need to do that like this kid had like like severe adhd and the only times it gives that, dopamine the only thing that uh. makes him feel normal is you know hanging off the yeah. side of this fucking the most mountain. extreme adrenaline driven activity yeah, yeah but it's not extreme for adrenaline for them they're like like they talk no, about that's this like kids normal like, yeah it, like it's so calm and relaxing for them well so remember when alex the guy alex got to the top of, so he finally free soloed that that, that he's wall like yay of, yeah <laughs> oh, i did yay. that yeah he was like you know what else you know what reminds me of did you guys ever watch the fight with fedor fedor emilienko against uh, i think it was randleman whatever his first name was randleman and Randall, this was Pride, and Randleman gets behind him, and I swear to God, suplex, like jumps in a suit. So Randleman was this big, roided out wrestler, S jumps with a suplex and, la and lands on Fedor's head upside. <laughs> and you're like, he's dead. There's no way he survived that. Oh my God. And Fedor uh, turns him around and then arm locks him and wins. And then he stands up in like typical Russian fighter, sta you know, fashion. He's like, Puts his hand up like, bro, I'd be doing backflips. If I did that and survived and beat someone, I'd be jumping out of the ring, you know, high-fiving my mom. It would be so interesting totally. to see, like, brain scans on all those, like, like athletes like that, with that exact example. Like, if it, if they're, it's like an, it's a neurological thing that causes that, right? It's not like their, their character, like, it's more that the way their brain fires and operates is they don't get the same adrenaline rush as you or I would from something as simple as, well, they think is simple you know what's as funny is that climbing the, a mountain. The, the, the evolu like evolutionary bi biologists talk about like these extreme behaviors. Like what's the benefit? Like why would people, why would there be humans? And it's usually males. Males yeah. typically are the ones that typically fall in this category. That will do what, what most of us would consider crazy. Presses the potential of uh, he, of us humans. Well, there's two. There's two two parts of it. One, the reason why it's usually males is because we're expendable. So, like uh, a mm -hmm. civilization, if it loses a good percentage of its females, they're screwed because you know a woman can only have one baby theoretically every nine months, whereas one man can impregnate a whole bunch of women in nine months. So men are expendable. Challenge me. Yeah. So, <laughs> so nature basically is taking experiments on men, and then also. It's a good idea to throw out the occasional dude that's going to go, you know, don't go over that mountain over there. There's freaking saber truth lions. And somebody like, has to. I'm going to go <laughs> yeah. check it out. Steve will do it. And he comes back and like, <laughs> yeah. everybody knows the Steve. Yeah. There's a pineapple <laughs> tree, everybody, Steve. dude. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. Hey, speaking of human behavior, did yeah. you guys, uh, I read an article uh, with Elon Musk talking about uh, immortality. Mm -mm. Really interesting. He says that it's a bad idea for humans to live forever because- uh, we tend to get set in our ways, in our thought processes, and we need a younger generation to come through to always challenge Disrupt old, it. Disrupt yeah, the, it. The young lion to kind of kill you. Yeah, it made me think, like, uh, like what other issues you guys could you guys see with immortality? Because I think it would pose, like, the biggest psychological stress on us. Well, it'd be harder to think of a purpose, too. Like, we have a window. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you have the, you, like the when you have purpose, you're affected. like, I want to leave this part of my purpose is I want to leave this legacy behind, or I want to make this impact while yeah. I'm here. But if you're always going to be here, mm -hmm. there's less of that drive for purpose. Like I'll get to it. <laughs> I'll get to it the next 300 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You think apathy would be a big part of that, right? Yeah. Cause I've seen, been here, done that, you know, and then that's the thing too, is you get older, you realize things are so cyclical. Yeah. And, you, and you see all these things start to emerge and repeat itself. I think that would drive you crazy yeah, after a while. It's like the vampires in movies, you know? Yeah. They're like just bored. Oh, yeah. dude. Yeah, I live in my castle. Like, whatever. I wish you would have watched uh, so What We Do in the Shadows. They had a, like, a new season. Oh, and they dealt this. with this subject itself. And so one of the vampires was just like, you know, at that point where he'd lived so many centuries uh, that he started doing like yoga and, and he started like trying to get all like spiritual because he hadn't done that before. And it turned out that this was like a cult that was basically trying to turn him into a human. And then the, the leader was like eating everybody. <laughs> so anyway, it was hilarious. What a great, it was a uh, great premise. Great writing in that show. Yeah. Speaking of uh, like uh, skin that never gets older, uh, Adam, I want you, cause this cracked me up. Uh, these are uh, the tech kind of texts you don't ever think you'd get from your buddy. Oh, yeah. I want you to tell everybody because you read it to me. I thought, that oh, was what my buddy Shane sent over yeah. to me. Yeah. So you remember, Justin, you remember uh, Shane he played for the New York Giants, right? Being yeah. a, he came in here a, little, a year or two ago or whatever. Yeah, we worked 
with him. He shot uh, some of our at home mods with us. Yeah, yeah. So. so he he reached out to me like I don't know, like two or three weeks ago. I actually, want to talk about real estate. So he's uh, that he's done with the NFL and they're now like big time into real estate investing. And so, and he's got partners. And he was really curious, like you know, how do we structure that and how does that all work? And so we had a long old conversation about that. And then before he hang we hung up, he was just like, oh, I wanted to ask you too about uh, Caldera. What do you what do you think about it and everything like that? And I said, dude, I absolutely love. It. He's like, no, I. I listen to every episode, so I hear you talk about it. He goes, "What exactly are you? Which one are you doing?" So I sent him the three that I I, I am using. Right, the I forget the names of all of them. The serum. Do you use the, do you the, use the moisturizer too? The moisturizer and when the, do you put the? Okay, here's a question: Do you put the moisturizer on and then the serum, or is a moisturizer at night, serum in the day? So I whatever. Uh, what's the what the cleanser is in my shower? Mm -hmm. So when I, when I wash my face in the shower, I, I use the cleanser. When I get out of the shower, I put the moisturizer on. When I come to work, I use the serum. Oh, okay. So, so I'm doing it right. That's kind of the order that. I, I have, to be I, honest with you, I don't even know if there that was what I was supposed to do or not. That just seems <laughs> like it looks that. like it's the right yeah. way to do and it. That's I've been seeing way. your face look really nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyways, I, I, he's like, he told me, he's like, I have psoriasis too. So he hears me talk about my psoriasis, and he goes, has it really helped you? And I'm like, no, absolutely. That was what sold me on the company before we even started working with them. So that was what, just two weeks ago? I got a text like two days ago and he just told me like, bro, I literally woke up with the the clearest skin I've ever had in my life. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, he's, yeah, he's, I know. He's like You're, the most alpha so I know conversation it's like, yeah, ever heard. Like two alpha dudes talking about their skin. Like, <laughs> I know, that's oh, when he told me, bro. I was like, on the inside, it's, I was kind of laughing. <laughs> just giggling, yeah. yeah right. like, he's like, Adam's like, dude, look what my buddy said. Don't me. you dare yeah. share this on the podcast. Yeah, yeah it's, it's almost shout like, out to is it working for you? Cool, bro. Yeah. Like fist bump. Hey, my skin looks amazing. Thanks, Adam, for all of your advice. I watched this little short documentary on skin on that, it's on Netflix called Examined, I told you guys about. They have one on skin. Well, you've been really going down the rabbit hole on that one, huh? Oh, boy. Some of them are good. I, I'm going to say this, though. Some of them inject, okay, I'm, if, if I irritate you, I don't care. Mm. They inject wokeness for no reason. So mm. they'll be talking about a scientific like topic, and then for whatever reason, they're going to throw in like little woke, you know, well, comments. Well, you forgot about us over yeah, here. Speaking yeah. of skin, yeah. you know, did you know that it's racist? Whatever. I'm like, come on, dude. I just want to learn about the skin. Like, stop <laughs> lecturing me on all, all this crap. Anyway, when uh, they talked about skin, you know, what they were showing how skin works and what causes uh, acne. And the oils that your skin produces really fill in the cracks and prevent things from getting below the the layer, the top layer of your skin, which then can can cause inflammation and infection. Constantly washing your skin with soap gets rid of those oils and literally and opens up these cracks. Out, right? yeah. yeah, so that bacteria and shit gets in there. And so, okay, so what do you got to do? Well, if you wash your face, you want to use an oil. That is that is similar to the kind of oil and sebum or whatever that your skin produces. So I think this is one of the reasons why their uh -huh. oil is so damn good because hmm. it's all natural. The pH they did a very good job of making sure the pH was kind of matched skin. Mm -hmm. So when you put it on, this is why I have oily skin. Justin's got dry skin. Adam has psoriasis. We all use the same product, and it helped all of us. Right? It's not like it made me oilier. Yeah. And it worked for you or vice versa. Well, it's funny because we'll go up to trucking and it's really dry there. You yes. know, and you guys are always like, oh, God. And I'm just like, I'm normal. <laughs> <laughs> this is my environment, you know? As, yeah. <laughs> I'm normal. Just flaking it's everywhere. The yeah. flakes falling off. Yeah. Just, just sweeping behind him. Yeah. <laughs> Blow I don't know if Andrew, but I got flakes. Turn, turn the fan on. Oh, like, who was the NFL player that went viral? Did you see that, Justin? His uh, Oh, it was not NFL. It was Kevin Durant. Look this up, Doug. You guys are going to laugh I right here. I did not see this. this. Is what we're talking about. Kevin Durant, uh, uh, dry ankle. Just oh, that's all you got to oh, Google. I guarantee you. Like peeling skin off. So it was. Just, so he normally wears like the you know the leggings underneath his basketball shorts, so he doesn't show his legs ever. Yeah. And I guess there was a gap, like I don't know, maybe four to six inches between his sock and his leggings, and someone zoomed in and took a picture, and it like went viral. <laughs> Everybody was talking about it in the NBA of like, yo, bro, you fucking. Uh, the, the, dude, fans are the, ruthless. Picture to the right. Dude. See if you can picture to the right. See if Poor you can guy. zoom. Oh, zoom. look at. It looks like sock, bro. Bro, it looks like a desert. <laughs> what the hell? He looks like it's like a rhinoceros. That shit went. This was just like this, elephants. This game. season, oh, and uh, I totally forgot about that. That would have made it for a good caldera. Well, definitely need some caldera. <laughs> Somebody on that. give him a glass oh, of water, God. bro. Right? Look out! I was bad. Oh, that's hell of bad, right? Oh, that's, wow! <laughs> that's you guys really, just reminded me of that. That's really terrible. About that. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, Justin, that's I got, I got, I got, I got an article. I think you'll absolutely love. Oh, sweet. So I don't remember how. I, why did I look this up? I looked up. 
it, times that the government experimented on its own citizens, okay. and there was something oh, that God. you said. <laughs> yeah, okay, because I just sparked got, this. I saw a video recently that uh, that just surfaced uh, with Bill Clinton. Like, oh, that's what it was. Yeah, so he was he was addressing. Um, I don't know what happened, like when this was, in the 1990s at some point, right? And and he was talking about how people had been experimented on um, with injections of plutonium, yeah. uh, unbeknownst to them. Like, it, it, you know, military people, like regular citizens that the government had experimented on. And he was basically kind of apologizing yes. on behalf of the government. So so here, trip off this, right? So I knew about, I'm going to go through some of these, right? And the first one, they talk about the, the Tuskegee uh, syphilis uh, experiments, yes, right? Yes, I'm, a, I'm By the familiar way, with that. All the ones I'm going to say right now have been acknowledged, and many of them the government actually apologized for. These are the ones not we, conspiracy. This no. is just education that you need to absorb. These are the ones we know of. So, like for example, the Tuskegee syphilis study began in 1932. They took 600 African American men, and 400 of them had syphilis. The rest didn't. And they basically observed the people with syphilis. We had penicillin. We had ways of treating them. They gave them fake penicillin and just watched to see what the syphilis would do <laughs> to their bodies. Right. Meanwhile, though, telling them that we're treating them. Oh. Terrible. It's it's awful, awful, terrible. No. Then there's a there was a, a penitentiary malaria study. So the U.S. government conducted the Stateville Penitentiary Ma Malaria Study in the 1940s in Illinois. It involved 400 prisoners who were illegally infected with malaria and subjected to studies. The goal was to test experimental drugs to find a cure for the disease. In addition, the tests were administered and documented solely by the prisoners themselves. So they basically were doing it themselves oh according God. to what they were told to do. And this is, again, another experiment that, that we did. Then there's one, the, the listen to this one, the Navy sponsored beef blood transfusions. So in 1942, the Navy had, uh, was, they, let's see, the Navy had contacted Kahn. So Kahn, Edward Kahn is a biochemist who was working at Harvard to engage in the secret project to discover a possible biological weapon. His work involved injecting prisoners with cow blood to detect a protein that could be used in the event of an upcoming war. Oh, my God. Yeah, what went wrong there? The 64 subjects who were injected with the cow blood all suffered catastrophic event, uh, effects, including death. Then the plutonium yeah. testing. This was in the 1940s. Um, they wanted to look at the effects of radiation. And so they they gave patients doses of radioactive plutonium in the form of, inject, of, a, of injections. And a majority of them were already terminally ill. So like, yeah. they're going to die anyway. Let's just give them plutonium. Too. And that by, that's three. There's 10 that I have in this article. We'll post it in the show notes of real studies the government did on people. And we wonder why some people are hesitant. Yeah, to like, get, like get have some questions, shot, right? <laughs> like <laughs> at, at uh, public policies and, and things that are concerning our health. Yeah. Uh, it's just questions, right? Like, can we just talk about questions and be more transparent, bring more data to the table? These are just normal things I think people should discuss. I think hist if you're if, historically speaking, you're, it's probably more wise to be like, pause. Like, wait. Let me see what's going on here because we know what the history what is. What are the motivators? Yeah. yeah. And what's Where's going on? Where's the money? Yeah. And what's going on right now? Yeah. So I'll switch us from conspiracy theories over to uh, metaverse talk since I'm going to bring something I think every episode. I think it's intertwined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But go for it. Yeah. Related to this. Did you guys see uh, the the whole thing with Quentin Tarantino getting sued by, uh, I think it's, is it Miramax or one of the one of the production companies that are, are suing him over the NFTs that he's making? No. Uh -uh. Okay. Okay, so a really interesting idea, and I believe that there's going to be Star Wars ones, Justin, that will will follow this. Already bought them. So he took, uh, I think, seven pages out of Pulp Fiction that never made it into the script and made NFTs out of it. Oh, oh that's cool. That's yeah. brilliant, right? And so the but because but he's getting sued uh, by the production company because they own the rights to Pulp Fiction. But wow. his case is. That wasn't part of Pulp Fiction. These are what never made it. I sold uh, you the script yeah. that you have that is, and so I'm selling this individually. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, copyright that makes sense laws. Too. Are yes. copyright laws and patents going to cover? So that in the future, they're mm. going to, and, and, and they some of them do already, depending on, I forget the wording. I was listening to this guy talk about it, and like they, they are putting it in there that like anything related beyond created, like there, there's, there's verbiage now to cover their tracks so they own everything. 
but you have some of these opportunities. You think of like Star Wars. There's lots of characters that never made it into the, the movies. There's lots of yes. spinoffs from the scripts. And so they're talking about making NFTs uh, around that. And I'd love those. to see what those pages yeah, had on trippy. them. You know, you know what I watched the other day was uh, Rocky Four, but with new footage, like uh, footage that was never included. Mm. Sylvester Stallone cut. It's cool if you're a huge fan. Right. So I love that kind of stuff, right? I'd love to see, you know, what was... I'd love to see, like, is the, the fan theory of Jar Jar Binks becoming a Sith uh, lord. Oh, my god! I'd love to see that. I'd buy that. Was that's, that is that true, or are you just making that up? Yeah. That's oh, a that's a real theory because of, uh, you know, you ever heard, like, Drunken Master? Yes. Uh, so, Kung Fu or whatever? Yeah, the Kung Fu movies where you have this sloppy, drunken master who's just, like, you know, is unassuming. And they go to attack him, and then he just does all these crazy, like, drunken moves, but kicks their ass. Yeah. Oh, really? And so it's sort of like along that vein of maybe he was the underestimated one that actually had, like, devious plot that oh. th they think that Lucas was going to bring him back to be, like, sort of the ultimate evil Sith Lord. So he worked his way in acting like a dumb. Yeah, just, whoa. Yeah. You know, that drunken master, the drunken kung fu is a real... If I'm, I'm never, not mistaken, I've real, never heard of that. You never seen drunken style kung fu? Well, I mean, so I'm sure I've seen like a clip. They of that, pretend I like I, they drink from a like a like a yeah, bottle, like a and then they use these circular kind of like weird movements that that emulate being, being drunk. drunk. Yeah, and it's hard to predict. That's I guess the fighting style. Yeah, you know, and, and it's sort of yeah, it it, it it takes the the opponent off guard because they think they have like this in the bag, you know, and and the whole thing is that this is basically a technique that they're using to almost disarm I, their opponent. I watched so many kung fu movies when I was a kid. Me I was, too. I was always like, oh, it's dragon style versus, you know, drunk style. <laughs> oh, I love it. Did you did you do the voiceover dubs? That oh, was my favorite part. They were I, I had no idea like Bruce Lee and I feel some like of his probably original wore films, like a gi to school at one point too. Like, never I wore like, it. I actually wore it. <laughs> hey, hold on a second. I wore my judo gi. Guys, I got you stripes him, today. Like, in fourth grade like rolling up in his gi and stuff yeah, like that to school. I, mean, I, I can't talk too much shit because I tried the crane kick on somebody one time. Did you like a real like really tried it? Like you were running, ah! like you were gonna fight him, or you no? Like around? I was fucking around. Oh, well, that's yeah, not big of a deal. Yeah, but but it'd be pretty funny if someone it. was like in a street fight and really tried to pull. That would it be off. funny. Yeah. Oh, and actually hit him. Didn't what's didn't Anderson Silva hit somebody in the yeah. face with a front kick? That I mean, it wasn't a crane. Randy kick. Couture. Yeah, he knocked, he, popped him right in the yeah, face. Knocked him with out. That. Come on, man. That was, or the front kick. Yeah, he did a front. That's that's the end part of. But it's basically yeah. It looked like the same. thing. look, I'm not gonna lie. I did wear my judo gi for Halloween. <laughs> just cool. I, dressed, I dressed up as the thing I wear when I go to judo. It's like, I really wanted to wear it to school, so I was trying to find a way out how I could do it. Oh, Halloween, that's it. I'll be me for Hold Halloween. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Did yeah. you ever dress up as a football player I for know. Halloween? All right, then. Coming. Shut your face. I knew face. this was coming. Did you ever dress up like a basketball player? I dressed my son up this last Halloween as a basketball player. Did I, you dress your son up? To, 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 to my son was no, me no, for Halloween. No, Is that the most narcissistic help thing ever? What? My, the, remember when we did that documentary or we played that rivalry football game right? oh, yeah. after that that year uh, Ethan uh, dressed up as me in my uniform oh, my and God. everything I was like ah, bro your heart uh, must have exploded yes <laughs> dude it was like the best oh that's phenomenal yeah. dude. that's phenomenal I gotta tell you guys so we're supposed to mention Paleo Valley and uh, I, I gotta tell you guys their bone broth protein this yeah. is the for me digestibility is such a big deal mm -hmm. I can drink this stuff all day long and it's like water yeah. I can't do that with any other protein. So I've literally bumped my protein by like 80 grams very easily. Yeah. And I have no- Courtney digest made a chicken soup with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so interesting. I, I actually am having that for lunch, but yeah, delicious. Well, wait, so she she used the- is the base, right? Oh, It's yeah. bone broth. Yeah. It's Add it to water, it heat it up. Tastes, you got bone perfect. broth. Yeah. There's no, here's a deal. Well, that well, Doug, you should do that. You just made he just made that chicken soup on the uh, on the uh, Instagram last time you did your day in the life, right? Yeah, you should I do mean, that next time. That's a good idea. I'm gonna there's, try it out. The, if you look at the ingredients, this is what it says: ingredients, bone broth. That's it. There's nothing. <laughs> but wait, in what there. a way to yeah. make your chicken, your your yeah, your chicken the soup, protein, like little. be actually because that's just it. The soup's not normally that high in protein. I mean, I, anytime we make homemade chicken soup, we always put more well, chicken in it, so it's actually somewhat of a protein meal. But yeah. you do that with the bone broth, and now you got yourself like a, a super bonus. Soup. Now yeah. the broth doesn't taste. I mean, the, the the powder doesn't taste like chicken though. It tastes it? like bone broth no, if you no, add it to water, heat it up. Does it? Taste oh, like wow. bone well, yeah. yeah imagine if you just mix it in with the the chicken broth. I bet you wouldn't even notice. It's yeah. even in there. It probably okay. would blend really Sneak well since it, it has there. such a, a mild taste to it. This is what Je so when Jessica makes baby food for the baby, when she adds like water or whatever, it's bone broth. I tell you, this kid, man, she's oh, <laughs> we're, man. yeah, so we're giving trying, trying to build a super athlete. It's a good time. Huh? Yeah.
Hey, real quick, you got to check out one of our partners, Zbiotics. They make genetically modified probiotic drinks that are patented, that are designed to help you with the negative effects of alcohol. So here's how it works. You drink Zbiotics, then you go hang out with your friends, enjoy your alcohol, and the next day you feel way better. Ladies and gentlemen and everyone else, this product really works. Go check them out. Head over to zbiotics.com. That's Z B I O T I C S dot com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump 10. That's mind pump one zero for 10% off your purchase. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Vanessa from Illinois. Hey, what's up, Vanessa? How can we help you? Hi. First of all, I wanted to say hello to everybody and thank you for having me on. I love your podcast. Thank you. Um, hello. <laughs> hello. My question is, uh, but first, before I want to give some context, um, I'm 27 years old. I'm a female. I'm five foot one, and I weigh about 112 pounds. Um, so I've been working out consistently for years, and I've tried it all, but I really love strength training the most. Um, and not until last year did I really learn about nutrition and how to calculate my macros to reach my goals. Um, this helped me lose those stubborn pounds dramatically. And I actually went from a consistent 118 pounds to a consistent 112, um, 111. And I really feel like I look and I feel stronger and leaner. Um, so I started out by finding my maintenance, which was about 1800 calories, and then went into a deficit to 1500 calories, um, which resulted in that weight loss. And from this past August until about the end of October, early November, I have been at a maintenance of 1800. But now I really want to focus on adding more muscle. So I've been slowly creeping into a surplus since the beginning of November. Um, so about every week I add about 50 or so calories. So I'm currently close to 2,100 calories and I have been feeling so stuffed from this. Um, so I really want to add muscle and I know that the only way by listening to your podcast is to be in that surplus. But my question is, is it really good to eat that much if I'm feeling stuffed just to hit my macros and my calories? Or should I just eat until I'm satisfied and not hit them? Yeah, um, good, it's a good, good question. Great question, Vanessa. Are, um, okay, so you're feeling stronger. You got leaner. You're not feeling very good by trying to force food into your mouth. What do you think my answer is going to be? Right. Don't force it. <laughs> yeah, that's hundred percent. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> this is a, this is a really good topic because uh, I, I, or at least for me, I think my advice has changed over years with somebody like this. totally. Mm -hmm. I think in the past, um, I would have probably told you like, hey, if you want to build that muscle, you, you want to grow, we got to do yeah, this. Get over it and just that's right. Eat more. Yeah, and get over it. Eat yeah. more. We got to we got to keep pushing. We got to keep pushing. Um, where now I probably would, would make you reflect a little bit more on your goals and, and, and probably have a little more compassion on where you probably already are and how good you, you're good, how good you're already doing. And also one day of missing calorie goals is not going to set us back at all. So I like this question because I know that mm -hmm. my advice ha has changed in the years. Yeah, so. you're, you're doing mm -hmm. – actually, and I want to say this. You're doing phenomenal. Right. I mean, you're really doing phenomenal to be oh. in this place. <laughs> this is the pla This is a good place to be because maintaining a lean body for you now is going to be relatively easy in the sense that you're not starving. Yeah. Right? That's really hard, right, when you're really hungry and, right. and, and, and you're like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> I can't eat anymore because I'm so hungry. But if I do, I'm going to – you're in the opposite position. We're like, ooh, I can't eat anymore, but I want to gain more muscle. So here's my advice. My advice is going to be to manage that feeling so that you can put yourself in a position to gain more <laughs> muscle because you want to gain more muscle. So there's a couple, right. a couple things I want you to focus on. One is I want you to identify the foods that make you feel the most stuffed, the ones that are the hardest to eat, the most mm -hmm. challenging to eat. Maybe identify foods that might cause a little bit of blow or digestive issues. Start replacing those foods with foods that are really easy to digest and foods that make you feel like you want to eat more. So choose foods that might be a little bit more palatable, easier to digest. That'll help. And then here's the second part. You've been doing this since uh, early November. You're already about a, a month and a half or so 
into this kind of you know climbing the calories up and surplus deal. I think you you should throw in maybe a week of of maintenance or slight mm-hmm. deficit. I love that. I love right. that idea. Or even a even just a two even just a two day uh, low calorie. Yeah, and so watch what it does if, to if you. If you if you're feeling like you're having to, you know, stuff and and you're having a hard time hitting the two thousand plus calories, nothing says you can't have two days in a row of hey, I'm going to run two fifteen hundred calorie days, and then watch what happens on day three how you feel. Totally. Yeah. And 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 interrupting that bulk, and this is why we 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 promote the you know mini cuts and mini bulks where you don't really run in a calorie surplus longer than two to four weeks total before you go back the other direction and you can either interrupt it with a week-long cut like sal saying or even just a two day in a row of low calorie and watch how you feel by day three you're going to probably want to eat those two thousand plus calories yeah one more thing vanessa um one of the best signs of an effective strength training workout. Now it's not, this isn't foolproof, but it is a great sign typically is that somebody's appetite will increase. So that, that oftentimes, right. that oftentimes, not always, of course, because appetite can be connected to so many different things, including cravings and emotions, but oftentimes having a, a general increase in, in appetite means your body's trying to fuel some muscle growth, right? So my next question is going to be, um, what kind right. of what kind of workout are you doing? Because your workout might not be sending the most effective muscle building signal, or maybe you need to change the workout. Are you following a MAPS program? Like, what does your workout look like? I'm not following MAPS. Um, I'm actually. Have you ever heard of Sydney Cummings? Yeah, I do. On YouTube. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that. so I'm following her and. She's like really helped me learn about nutrition and like proper form, which is so I've been with her for about a year sticking to her workouts. Okay. So, um, and so, doing those about like five to six days a week. What do those look like? Yeah, okay, we're in a, what's we're in a bulk and like, we're doing five to six days of working out. We, yeah, we have we have some stuff we could change. Yeah, right break, here. break that down for the audience. If yeah. Like. Sure. So Sydney Cummings, she posts um, workouts on YouTube every day and the workouts range from 30 to 60 minutes. Um, she'll do a lot of strength training, but when she does, um, she times them. So for example, you'll do one move for 45 seconds at a time. Oh, wow. And now this is because she has to like do it for a whole audience. So it's not like me really sitting there focusing on myself and how many reps I could do. I'm just kind of doing like, for example, deadlifts for 45 seconds at a time. Um, and she kind of keeps you going right now. She has a program in the month of December where it's a combination of strength training and now she's including some more cardio. Um, so for example, today I did 45 minute um, glute and legs AMRAP. So it was four minutes at a time, two different exercises. So for example, um, we did the first round was goblet squat for 10 reps and then Deadlift for ten reps. Mm-hmm. Oh, so Vanessa, Vanessa, like, Vanessa, I'm so glad you asked that You, you don't even have to go any further, yeah. and yeah, we're, we're going to be able to help you out. Yeah. If our goal is to build muscle right now, uh, and and you're also struggling to eat more calories, there's such an easy fix right here by changing your programming. Look, up. not yeah. not trying to hate on anybody. Okay, um, I'm familiar with yeah. I'm familiar with these workouts, and for what the goals mm-hmm. are that you have, actually, for what most people's goals are. And again, not trying to hate anybody, but these workouts suck. They're not yeah. pro- they're not programmed well. It's basically a you know body part specific hammer your body. Uh, you know, follow me along, you'll get sore type of workout. I, I don't even want to say suck with you, Sal, because here's the thing: it's probably helped you out this far to get to where you're at, and you've and you've done well. So I don't. It, 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 it really has. So yeah, so let's not say it sucked. Let's just say. There's something way better for you. Now right we can now. <laughs> perfectly transition you over to something that's very much more strength focused, and you know we'll provide that muscle building signal, which will complement what you're doing nutritionally. So I'm really glad Sal brought that up because it is, you know, this is the other big component to you know you trying to now move more towards building muscle. Watch what happens when you follow Maps Anabolic. We're gonna send that over to you for free. Yeah, it, it'll Maps Anabolic will, will blow your mind oh, yeah. because you've been working out for you know about. A year. I want you to do three foundational workouts a week because there's the option to do two or three. So I want you to do three. And then on the other days, mm-hmm. I want you to do three trigger sessions a day. Each one lasts about, you know, eight to 10 minutes. You, you don't have to do those on the weekend. So it's just Tuesday and Thursday, essentially. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday would be the foundational workouts. Tuesday, Thursday, trigger sessions. If you want, you could do trigger sessions on Saturday and Sunday as well. 
but it will blow your for what your goals are. You just wait. Do it for three weeks, and you're going to be like, holy cow, this is completely also, different. Also, watch what happens to your appetite because you're going to send a much louder yeah. muscle-building signal by following a program like this, and your appetite will naturally start to reflect that, and you'll just be able to easily eat the higher calorie. Watch what happens. So it, you're actually in a beautiful position. You've yeah. gotten great results following a routine like this that I think is inferior to what you're trying to do. Um, you've got great results from mm -hmm. it. You've you've built a great physique. You want the next level. You want to continue building muscle. MAPS Anabolic is a much better protocol for what you're trying to do. Simply follow that and then watch what happens. I'm excited for you, Vanessa. Well, I'm so excited. Wow, this has helped me so much. Like I just like it changed my perspective on a lot of things, which is what I was looking for. So I really, really appreciate all this help. Yeah, perfect. We'll, we'll send that yeah. over to you. And then you know what else I want to do is I want you in our forum because yeah. I'm really interested to see um, how you feel about how your body starts to change and how I you can't feel. wait till you report on it. Yeah, yeah it's going to be totally and, different. Yeah, and selfishly, <laughs> I'd love to share, I'd like to share your progress with the rest of the forum because I know what's going to happen. If you're already feeling the way you are now, just wait till you follow like really well programmed resistance training. It's going to be night and day for you. So, yeah. so we'll send that to you and we're going to send you free access to the forum. I'd love for you to post in there, introduce yourself, tag the, the, you know, the three of us and then let us know how everything's working. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you so much. No problem, Vanessa. Thanks for calling. Right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Oh my God! So glad you asked that question. Yeah, you know what my f we were all we were all hovering around just the nutrition portion yeah, well, of this. She's doing well nutritionally. I mean, her whole strategy it was like you know you don't get that a lot. So that was like wow, you know that's that's great to hear. I, you that. know, I'll tell you what. Uh, selfishly, as a trainer, and even now, some of my favorite people to to help, and again, this is selfish, is when I see somebody who's progressing in spite of the fact that they're right. following right, right, right. a program that isn't very good. And I say, oh my gosh, yeah. if you're making progress now, yeah. I can't even imagine what's going to happen when, when we actually put good programming. And these are the people that tend to blow... They, they tend to blow the bell curve out, right? You start yeah. to see like crazy. Oh, this the was, acceleration of progress is going to be huge. This but, was, they're, but they're also some of the hardest people to reach because they've had success in spite yes, of what they were doing. Yes, but uh -huh. that's luckily why, she called, right? That's why I wanted to point out the like, okay, I don't want to say suck because if you say that to somebody yeah. who, who you've or who, who arguably might be in the best shape of their life. Yeah, you'll turn them off and they'll be like, well, I got all this results. You know, right, and I don't know about. this. I don't know this girl personally, right? So the, the YouTube star that she's following who may have gave un lock some things for her yeah. that completely opened new doors and changed her life. And who are we? Let's say she just found mind pump and she's only listened to two or three episodes of yeah. ours, but she's followed this girl's journey for the last two years. Who's completely helped her mm -hmm. us telling her that that, that program <laughs> sucks may turn her <laughs> off to, to continuing on with what we want her to do, no, which right. is a superior yeah. program guaranteed. Oh, Doug pulled up what she's been following. And for someone who's trying to build muscle, it is literally the opposite of what I would want her training. Like she would not be training five to six days a week in AMRAP circuit based, no rest periods, 45 minutes straight of doing absolutely. It's the opposite of what she should be doing. And if she just tweaks that the watch what happens with her appetite yeah. and her diet it'll all fall right into yeah, place by the way you know this this doug was like this doug was a client that came to me and was fit Fo following and youtube stars and not youtube stars booty like pump classes back in my day I there knew was it. no youtube I, I knew you were doing those booty pump classes on <laughs> yeah. youtube well, i have a nice butt though <laughs> yeah. right hey he does Sal was slinging them vhs tapes yeah we gotta, we gotta yeah. post the picture no but he came and he was Fit and doing okay in spite of the the, the bad workouts he was right, following. Right, the right. second he followed good programming, he went from thinking he was a hard gainer to hitting numbers and strength gains and muscle gains that, you know, he realized like, oh wow, I got some real genetic potential here. So I think that's what's going to happen to Vanessa. I totally. Agree. Our next caller is Michelle from New Jersey. Hey Michelle, how can we help you? Hey, um, so. Thank you, Olga. Thank you all so much for all of your content. I love you guys. I listen to you all the time. So I uh, just wanted to say thank you for everything that you do. Um, my question is more so for me as a newbie personal trainer. Um, I have been a personal trainer for about a year now, but I actually have to take a pause on personal training because I am performing in a Broadway show in New York City right now. Oh, cool. um, but awesome. this is more so for my husband and um, just learning your techniques and what you got, uh, what your philosophy is. So um, 
my husband is the complete opposite of me. <laughs> he is 6'3", he is 33, he weighs about 175, 100 to 100, can get up to 180 pounds, very tall, very lean, um, skinny, and he used to run a lot of marathons back in the day. Now we don't run any marathons anymore. I never ran marathons, but he doesn't run any marathons. We're strictly into strength training and uh, building muscle. Um, so we got into weightlifting by listening or watching, I'm sorry, by reading Mike Matthews, Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, Thinner, Leaner, Stronger. And that's when I really got into weightlifting and becoming a personal trainer. Um, we had take a, took a break from BLS and now we had just purchased, he had just purchased uh, MAPS Anabolic. And I am looking at that and kind of comparing the two and trying to see what your philosophy is based off of anabolic with, uh, versus BLS. Um, I see, I know in BLS, there's a lot of uh, big compound movements three minute rest, two to three minute rest in between, um, you know, focusing on those major muscle groups. But when I look at MAPS Anabolic, I feel like there's a lot of trigger sessions. The first three weeks is focusing on um, more, it, it seems as though for me, more, more endurance because it's less rest periods, hitting more muscle groups. Um, you're in the gym more five times a week. And I am curious on what you all's thoughts are on versus the two and trying to find a happy medium for my husband and also I'm learning at that same time <laughs> and I also have a um, bodybuilding coach that I work with for a potential to do a show by the end of uh, this time next year and his theories of like only training two times in a row no training back to back tempo training, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just trying to find a happy medium with my husband. And he's like, what should I do? I'm so confused. Yeah. So I'll, <laughs> uh, I'll give you the short and the long of it. Here's a short. Have him follow MAPS Anabolic. It'll, it'll blow away pretty much any of the other programs, especially for someone like him. Now, here's some of the differences. Mike Matthews, very smart guy, great friend of ours. He follows the science very, very well. So he, and this is what he does very well. He looks at the studies. He make sense of the studies, and then his workouts are based off of scientific research. Now, MAPS programs all of also follow the scientific research. However, they are also written by three trainers who trained for over two decades and worked with lots of people. So let us let me give you a, a comparison or a difference, right? With Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, and if we compare that to MAPS Anabolic, once you get past uh, pre-phase, with MAPS Anabolic, you're hitting the whole body three days a week. With Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, it's more like two days a week. It's a little bit more of a split in Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, less of a split, more full body in MAPS Anabolic. Why the difference? Well, here's why. If you train a body part two days versus three days a week, but the volume is is the same and the intensity is roughly similar, studies will show that the gains are going to be right around the same. However, what we understand as coaches and trainers is the more often you can practice certain lifts – the better you get at them and the faster you get at them. So in other words, rather than doing, let's say, you know, 20 sets for your legs uh, twice a week where you're doing 10 sets on work, one workout and 10 sets on another workout, what if we did 20 sets over three workouts? Even if the gains look similar in the studies, we know through experience, working out your legs, practicing squats, front squats, lunges, more frequently tends to produce better movement patterns, you tend to get better at those movements faster. And the strength gains, and this is what the literature will support, the strength gains tend to be superior because strength is skill just as much as it is uh, bigger muscles. As far as rest periods are concerned, mm. they compare, when you look at studies that compare <clears throat> long rest periods to short rest periods head to head, it's true that long rest periods build more muscle. But here's where people mess up. All the rest periods, within reason, still build muscle. And your body will adapt to a particular rest period if you stick to it all the time. Meaning if you do something novel, like go from three minutes to a minute and a half, you start to get the ball rolling again. So what you find with MAPS Anabolic is this phasing of rest periods where it goes, some of them are long, like phase one. And phase three, the rest periods are much uh, shorter. And then lastly, I'll touch on trigger sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, trigger sessions are not the same as workouts. Trigger sessions are literally like, you're, you know, you're getting a little bit of a pump 
a few days a week on your off days. It's not a workout. It's active recovery. Yeah, and it's, it's sending, not cardiovascular. And it's maintaining the muscle building signal you sent the day before. The day before is your hard workout. But what happens is you send this loud muscle building signal with your hard workout and it peaks at about 24 to 48 hours. We've studied this through what's called muscle protein synthesis. And then it starts to decline very quickly. If you do some trigger sessions, which they're not like workouts, you're not tearing muscle down, you're not doing that, but you're getting a bit of a pump. What you do is you're keeping that muscle building signal up higher for longer. This is why you'll notice that male carriers who don't go to the gym and do hard calf workouts, all they do is walk a lot, they still have muscular calves. They're not doing any bodybuilding, but you still see muscle being built in their calves or mechanics in their forearms. They're not at the gym doing forearm workouts with barbells and dumbbells, but for some reason, they've got strong muscular forms. Trigger sessions still provide that value, and so putting those on the off days turbocharges the rest of the workout and that's part that's really what makes maps on a ball so special there's also one more thing that you're missing that i think is one of the most valuable things and one of the things that attracted me to working with you guys when i when we first looked at maps anabolic before mind pump even started is if i have 10 clients um that are training with me for the next three months of those 10 clients maybe one or two of them never miss a week for the entire three months most of them, life happens in a week they take off or they might have a bad week of training where they only get in the gym once or twice. I know when I'm training them on a full body routine like MAPS Anabolic, they're not going to have as much of a setback if they missed one or two days training because they're still hitting a full body workout. This right. is the biggest flaw with body part splits. Not that they're not effective, not that it doesn't follow the science, is that it's missing the behavioral component, which is where the experience comes in with the three of us who have trained thousands of people over the last two decades, is I know behaviors and I know that it's inevitable, including myself, I'm going to have a week where I don't train as frequently. And when I have a full body routine, I hit every muscle group still, even when I only trained one day that week. And when you're talking about long-term gains and maintaining a physique, that person is better off. That's why we know it's superior for most people. Does it, does it mean that if somebody never misses a workout and they train splits for three, four, six months, that they won't have similar results? No, if you don't ever miss a workout and you're consistent as hell, then that's not bad. But I, we also wrote programs considering people's behaviors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, M Michelle, you said you're going to become a, you're you're becoming a personal trainer. Uh, I have my personal trainer certification. I've been certified for a year through ACE. Okay. And um, but I am on a Broadway show right now performing. Uh, I do about eight shows a week with that show. Uh, doing the personal training and doing that at the same time is really difficult because yeah, <laughs> I'm here all the time. So um, what, what you so if you really want to, this is what I advise to you to really learn uh, programming because you're not going to get. The, all the information from MAPS Anabolic. MAPS Anabolic is a piece of the bigger picture. In fact, what we recommend to people often is they follow our MAPS programs kind of one after another. So, you know, MAPS Anabolic for a few months, then you can go to MAPS Performance and then MAPS Aesthetic and then maybe MAPS Strong. Training in the, these different modalities, the different phases, different exercises really develops a well-rounded, strong, functional body. And long-term, you get great results. So, I recommend you do that. Kind of look at all of our programs so you can kind of get a, a better idea. You're not going to get all the answers from MAPS Anabolic. And then here's the other thing. The most valuable program that we have for you as a trainer is MAPS Prime and Prime Pro by yeah. far. N none of our programs are going to benefit you as a coach training other people like those two, program those two programs by far. I mean, you take those two programs, you apply some of the principles to your clients you'll blow away 99% of the trainers that are out there. I'm telling you right now. So it's not, you know, you'll learn from MAPS Anabolic, all those other programs, but it's Prime and Prime Pro. So if you don't have those, I'm going to send those to you because I really want oh, you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, we really value trainers and coaches. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that you'll, you'll gain value from. And then as far as your husband is concerned, go MAPS Anabolic, three foundational workouts a week, trigger sessions on the off days. Of course, make sure he feeds his body. Uh, and, and then watch what happens. Watch the strength and muscle gains. I think you'll be, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Definitely. He sees my muscle gains and he's like, why don't I get gains like that? And I'm like, well, you don't eat enough protein. You don't eat enough. <laughs> <laughs> you don't eat enough than me. And I'm like, you're going to eat completely way more. I'm like five, three, you're five, you're six, 
poo. Like, what do you think? <laughs> so he never wants to eat any more food. I'm like, you need to eat more, boy. <laughs> well, you're, and that's true though, too, right there, uh, Michelle. If she, if he's not, if he's not getting enough calories and protein, uh, he could be following the best program in the world, and he's not going to see a lot of muscle gain. Yeah. So make sure he stays on top of that. If he's hitting his protein intake and hitting his calories, following maps on a bulk, it, it will blow his mind. Yeah. By the way, what what awesome. brought? If do, can I ask what Broadway show you're going to be a part of? Yeah, I am in uh, Tina, the Tina Turner musical in New York City. Oh, that's great. Uh, very cool. <laughs> you know, it's I've, I've never been to a Broadway show. That's like one of my what? one yeah. of my dreams. I love shows, but I, you know, I've only I've watched some in the Bay Area and in, in comparison, I know we suck. So hmm. are you guys in uh, San Jose, right? We yeah, are. Yeah. Um, I played San Jose with Aladdin, the musical in oh. 2000. Oh, no way. Uh, 2019 I was there yeah we were there for six weeks <laughs> oh good deal that's excellent so do you come to the west coast very often how often do you come out this way uh I get out there probably once a year okay. and perform shows yep okay. depending on if I'm on tour right now I'm in a standing steady show so the show is like what? just in New York City but sometimes I go on tour and we will do all the um whole North America well, <laughs> M M Michelle we know how to take care of friends so next time you're out in this area if you hook us up with some tickets maybe we'll hook you up hey. some other stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, now that I know you like theater that makes sense so we, we got it I'll get y'all I'll get y'all to hook up 100% thank you, thank you Michelle and we'll send you Prime and Prime Pro okay because I, as, a, as a trainer, I think those are going to really, really provide some tremendous value to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, all thank the insight, and I definitely want to be a better trainer, so this is really, really helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, right. No problem. Yeah, I think um, when you compile a routine based off of the studies, you're a lot of the way there, right? If you look at the scientific well, that's studies- Well, this is why we like Mike so yes. much. This is uh, what all of- I mean, we didn't even know who Mike Matthews was- when we first started Mind Pump, and I forget who first introduced us to him, but when we got introduced to him, it was well, Doug. Doug knew him first, showed me, and then we were following. You, is that him. why you found him from like e-commerce stuff? Is that why you were marketing? Yeah, I've been following him for quite right. a long time. Because Mike is actually a marketing background who is kind of like a nerd like us. When he gets interested in something, he goes super. Oh, deep. he's hyper intelligent. Yeah, guy. and so he went super deep on fitness. And, he, you know, he read, you could tell the guys read a ton of studies because the way he has built his programming. But the, 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 the one thing that I, the one edge, okay, and I would tell Mike this to his face, he's a friend of ours that I think that we have on him is that we actually trained in person people for two decades, thousand plus people between uh, the three of us. And there's one more component to the science component, yeah. and that's the behavioral aspect mm -hmm. of it. And you just have, if, you're a, if your desired outcome as a trainer is to get your client the most results possible, you exactly, application and behaviors matters. And you have to factor that component in. And that's why we can't just purely follow the science. Yes, the science should be the foundation, but then we're not all in a six month study you know or six week study well, like I, that's not how people that's not how people interact in real a hundred percent and not only that i'll take it a step further you, there are no controlled one year two year three year long studies maybe observational where they ask questions and do surveys but nothing control when they compare rep ranges for example it's like 27 you know college aged males showing up at a gym training with with researchers for three months mm -hmm. like i train people for two years, three years, five, nine years, 10 years. So I see that long rest periods they do build more muscle. I also see that after four months, they don't. Yeah, We got to move to the shorter rest periods, right? Yep. I see that, yes, we could do a body part split and that's going to work just fine. But guess what? Over the course of a year, you're going to miss some workouts, like you said. Yep. Well, now we're missing whole body parts. Right. If we do full body, I also see that when I practice, if I get you to practice squats, a few days a week, it's better than if we practice it one day a week, even if the volume is exactly the same and the studies show that the results from that perspective are the same. So when you when you add both of those together, what you get is the is really, really effective workout program. That's the bottom line. Yeah. You know, you always miss the opportunity to shamelessly plug your book. I feel like uh, that would have been the direction to give for other than going. I mean, yes, buying all the programs would be great for the business and all, but I think that your book does a really good job of explaining the philosophy behind uh, maps. And I think that anybody who's curious, because this is a question that we get quite a bit. If, you get, if you're curious to the philosophy behind maps and why we program and why we write the programs the way we do, then you have to, you have to read Resistance Training Revolution. Our next caller is Brian from California. Hey, what's up, Brian? How can we help you? How's it going, guys? Um, I am a 40-year-old strength and conditioning coach 
football coach and a high school teacher. And instead of asking a question for myself, I figured I'd ask you guys a question uh, regarding my program. Um, currently, I, uh, I am an on the field coach, but I'm transitioning to the strength and conditioning program. And because of the COVID year and the community that I work in, our players don't have the best uh, weightlifting background. And so what I've tried to do is implement all the principles that you guys have uh, incorporated throughout your guys' programs and uh, implement it into our strength and conditioning program. And uh, I submitted uh, my workout plan to you guys, and I wanted to see if you guys had any tweaks or suggestions uh, on how we can actually improve or uh, things that you think might be able to be uh, added to it. Wait a second. You went you went 10-0 and 0 in the regular season? Yes, we went 10-0 in the regular season. Oh, yeah. shit. We're looking, work, at, man. We're, we're looking at your question right now. Do you mind if I read off some of the stuff that you wrote just so the audience knows? Yeah, what you're yeah. Talking about? knock it out. Okay, so um, it says here that you're you're having the, the, the boys go to the gym, the weight room, excuse me, three days a week. They do one priming exercise per zone. So that's like two, that. three, three mm -hmm. movements, one for the upper like that middle part of the body and then the lower body. Um, then after that, the boys go to the racks. There's 12 racks, 12 platforms. It's a nice school gym, by the way. Um, there's two kids per rack and two per platform. And there's four exercises assigned. So essentially the whole workout besides the priming is about four exercises. And then halfway through they switch, you go platform to rack and then vice versa. And you're taking from maps anabolic maps performance and maps uh, aesthetic. Yeah, I, I like I like where you're going. Yeah, man. is that is that pretty? That's did I cover that pretty well? Yeah, you knocked it out pretty well. Uh, the only thing is, there's actually eight exercises. There's four in each location, so Got they'll it. go four in the rack, and then half the period, and they'll switch to four on the platform. Okay, I, and now I, I'd love to hear what J Justin. This is his totally his wheelhouse, and um, his expertise is uh, yeah su superior on this. So well. Okay, so I'm trying to kind of rack my brain around what what were your difficulties with your kids? Because I know for me, the biggest difficulty was establishing proper forms and, me and mechanics because they just, I just felt like they didn't have any kind of, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of education provided previous to that in terms of, you know, a backloaded squat, deadlifts, you know, bench press. And so for me, I was scrambling to try and establish like proper form and, and really reduce it down to, you know, the bare minimum in terms of what I had them focus on. Uh, so it, it, with that in mind, uh, I, I've actually been doing quite a bit of this and, and thinking about how to construct a good off-season program and training. Um, and one of the things, and I love how you're bringing up the priming zones and you're addressing that before we even get into the workouts, because I think that's essential. And a lot of coaches, you know, just kind of breeze over a lot of like the actual um, quality of, of their movements and their their capability of, of providing that kind of stability and structure with their joints. Um, and so for me, I wanted to kind of maybe address it more from a unilateral perspective in the beginning and, and, and make sure that, you know, I was addressing the imbalances, you know, going through a phase of that and then kind of picking that momentum up and then going back into bilateral type of, uh, of lifts like you're, you're describing here. So, uh, I guess my question to you is how good do you feel the, their mechanics are currently? Well, what are the eight exercises? First of all, cause maybe yes, he's, maybe he's doing a Bulgar out. Bulgarian squad in there. What are you doing? So actually, um, I attached it to you guys, but we, do, it, there's three phases into it. So like what I've done is I planned out from January all the way through in season. Okay. So what we're looking at is we're doing all the major lifts, um, but depending on the phase, we phase into some unilateral stuff and some uh, multi-planar stuff. Just because nice. one of the things that I've, I've figured out with you guys and when I went through performance myself, I noticed that I was really strong in one plane, but I get into another plane yeah. and I would really struggle with that. And so yeah. that incorporating the multi-planar stuff and the, uh, the priming stuff was one of the key things our big issue was our boys weren't very mobile and we had built a pretty mm -hmm. good strength base uh, with our head coach. But our problem was, you know, COVID and everything else has gone on in the lockdowns. Yeah. A lot of our kids that are coming in haven't played or haven't worked out in quite a while. And so that was one of the big things that we found before in, in, in this season this year. 
Yeah, no, that's good to know because I'm glad you guys were able to establish good strength. I, I felt like we did a terrible job of that, and I kind of came in mid, uh, mid go in, in terms of our off season training. And so my big focus is to eliminate a lot of the cardiovascular uh, endurance type training and just focus on the strength and, and and get as far as we can, you know, up leading into you know Hell Week in in a sense uh, because that's one of those you know conditioning is sort of that button that that coaches always want to hit uh, because it's it's difficult. It's it, it provides that mental discipline, and um, this is sort of what you know a lot of coaches tend to throttle down on. When what's going to provide longevity and performance on the field is the strength that we're going to be able to apply. So, um, you know, so if you're if you don't mind, I'll kind of break down what I'm basically going to be doing with with this team and see if it applies to your guys. But we're going to be focusing primarily on unilateral training. We're going to build that into like a five by five type of uh, situation. Where we're working on you know five to seven core lifts and we're going to master those lifts we're going to kind of transition from that into more of a maps anabolic where we're just focusing on you know building up that muscle and size uh and add in a bit of hypertrophy uh and you know and i'm going to kind of drag that then into transition to more of a maps performance where we're going to get you know uh into actually uh that multiplanar type of of movement and strength uh and then you know i'm going to string that out you know all the way up until then the very last peak is we're going to be in our conditioning phase and, and we're going to be doing uh you know more speed power and skill training uh, in conjunction with that so um one of the things that i want to make sure that i establish is is the the skill on the field uh and so less on the conditioning more on the quality of the movement so explosive movement uh you know running their passing trees you know like having like each group so whether you're linemen you have you know very specific drills that you're running on the field uh like say on our if, if MAPS Anabolic is our example, we're going to be doing that during our trigger session type days. So, you know, they're going to be on the field just working and drilling their skill uh, and then also applying the the rubber band uh, workouts, full body workouts to, to then help to... Um, you know, establish that recovery, active recovery. Uh, and then we're going to jump back into our foundational type lifts. So um, I'm sort of like pairing those together and then using our program as the baseline, uh, but then implementing. And so one other thing to, to kind of, you know, sum this up as well, uh, deadlifting for me, I find, I find valuable. Um, I find a lot of value in the trap bar deadlifts with this particular group because it's agree. it's less uh technical and it's less cues i have to make sure i establish ahead of time but also you know the kids can just pick it up and, and really like build upon that that foundational strength and it's 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 something like that risk versus reward thing i'm always playing with that to see which one has the most value and so like even power cleans is something i'm sort of subbing out for things like heavy kettlebell swings uh and and also like trap bar uh type of uh clean so uh, just just things to consider in terms of like what where your athletes are at uh with their education their background their skill uh and then what you can establish in that window uh leading back into the season so justin i want to i want to back you up to when you talked about uh so let's look at this as a like a, a at least a rough time frame what are you talking about when you said unilateral training are you doing that for a couple weeks leading into MAPS anabolic? Are you doing that for three months? Like, how long are you focusing on unilateral before you move them into MAPS anabolic and then into performance? And how much of a, a time window does he need? Yeah, it's about a month, month and a half. We're, we're focusing on unilateral training and okay. then leading into the five by five, which we're going to run then for the next, like, you know, two months uh, leading into the MAPS anabolic, which we're, then we're going to establish that and go through that entire uh, progression. Jeez. <laughs> which then leads into uh, MAPS performance. And so I might actually repeat, you know, one or two phases of, say, MAPS anabolic or MAPS performance, depending on, you know, the timing of that leading into the end of the off season. Uh, so that's what I'm kind of constructing and drawing up currently. So essentially, uh, um, at least a month of unilateral type training. At least a month. Yeah. And, and, and two, this is good because after season, you know, the players are beat up. Uh, and... and 
if we just jump right into to strength training and we're building upon um, you know, some of these dysfunctions these, and we're not addressing them specifically. Uh, that's a good point. Um, you know, that's something that uh, is going <laughs> to, you know, we're, we're going to lead into bad patterns uh, that we're going to deal with later on. So yeah. I want to I really like hyper focus on those. And it's not as cool and sexy to, to, to get into that because the kids really want to just build muscle yeah, right now. Yeah. And one, one thing I want to comment on, Brian, is especially when you're working with, um, you know, high school kids. Form is everything. So uh, they may want to push themselves, add more weight. You see a slight breakdown in form. No, go lighter. I want your form to be perfect because the strength that they're that they're going to build with good technique and good firing patterns is going to translate more to the field than even more strength gains with crappy form, right? So focus on the form at all times. That's got to be the number because it's very easy for it to get away from you, especially when you're dealing with high school kids and there's a bunch of guys in the gym and they want to push and they want to lift harder and they, oh my God, I can add 10 pounds if I if I just, you know, tweak my form a little bit. Like you got to be really, really strict with the form because that's going to give them such big, bigger dividends than just pushing the weight. I mean, I, I just want to comment that I think you're, you're doing a hell of a job. I think what you built yep. uh, is a, is a pretty, pretty goddamn good foundation. Uh, I think the only thing that I would contribute is uh, the two things that I heard Justin say that's, that sounds different than what you're doing is probably starting the beginning of their weight training with unilateral stuff. So, you know, you pick your four to eight, you know, bi biggest bang for the buck type of unilateral movements to start this with and then incorporating some of the like – on field type of movements like you know running their their routes and stuff that that explosive training in there other than that i really like uh the direction that you're going maybe just put a little bit of focus on unilateral yeah. to start it off and i th i think what you're doing is a great job yeah. brian it, is, is it okay if you let us know what high school this is because i'm intending to know that's pretty phenomenal yeah i teach at Baldwin Park high school in uh southern california oh good deal all right shout out to those to, to you yeah. guys out there do you have so you have access to maps prime anabolic performance aesthetic are you in our forum yeah I, I have pretty much everything you guys have done i've been listening since episode 25 oh, oh shit. Awesome. Good deal. <laughs> okay hey please that's hey, why this programming looks so goddamn yeah, good. yeah. <laughs> well we got a new one coming out i'm not going to completely give it away but that's something that You'll i be able I, to use i do want you to use because i'm going to be using okay. it with my athletes as well uh, and uh, we'll keep you informed with that. Well, why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't we do something special for him, Brian? Why don't you email Justin personally, and maybe he can give you a peek at that before anybody else gets to see. There it, you since go. We can't. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be my beta tester. How about you, that? You got to be promised not to share it with anybody. Okay. I'll, I'm all for it. I won't share it. And just to just to touch on the uh, unilateral and the on the field stuff, I'm actually using the performance uh, mobility days. Beautiful. Uh, uh, the two days that we're not lifting to start in January, and actually since uh, the beginning of November. We've been going over technique and form with PVC pipe just because oh, I know God, yeah, any bro. breakdown in form. Um, I knew you were a smart it, guy. Yeah, dude, you're you're on the right path, yeah, bro. Brian. You're, that's fun. I love hearing this from yeah, yeah. a strength and conditioning coach for a high school. That's phenomenal. I really appreciate it, guys. You guys have uh, drastically improved my life as well as the people around me, and uh, now I'm hoping to impart that to my my players and my students. Yeah, thank yeah. thank you so much, Brian. On, man. Brian send a, send an, an email over to Jerry who who organizes these questions for us, and just let her know that uh, Justin was going to follow up with you uh, regarding yeah. a, the new program. And then I'd love to share notes with you as well, man. You're doing great things, so for sure, I really appreciate it, guys. All right, yep. brother. Thank you. That's a, you know, that's great. That's I love, cool, huh? Yeah, Well, I don't know. I, you know, high school strength coaches or high school coaches in general, sometimes I think get a bad rap and I understand why. Um, I've seen some of the workouts and the programming. I love hearing this though. This is excellent. Well, uh, These kids are getting in introduced their in their defense. The right way. Most, uh, all, well, not all, but most, unless you're going to some private high school, that has got the money. Are, are volunteer dads yeah, that they, are, uh, and they fall back on what they did. That's right. Back in you know, right. the eighties, yeah. So uh, it's changed a lot. So yeah, it's rare you get a guy like this who's actually probably pretty damn qualified. Yeah, to be helping these or get a Justin who's out there on yeah. the field. You're not getting like that type of a background. It's just so it's tough for high school. And, and 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 you know what? You're you're laying the foundation for these kids. So you could argue that it's probably one of the most important time for them to get really good. 
uh, good advice from a coach or a trainer. So I think he's, I think for the most part, you know, and then after hearing what he just said right now, I mean, he's really addressing the main concern of the unilateral was, you know, you're coming off this off season, you're not doing any, you're not doing anything. You have all these bad patterns, you have bad movements, but I mean, if he's incorporating stuff from performance on mobility days, he's working with PVC pipes to get technique down. He's peering into, he's looking into yes. all the dysfunction and addressing it right away. So that, that was my biggest concern. And that's why, you know, I mentioned that it was really because it's a way to, to be able to see that, um, you know, with with a large group of kids, pretty pretty visibly. Yeah, and, and the challenge was training, especially boys in this age group. Their bodies all of a sudden have all this testosterone. They don't have years of wear and tear uh, on their bodies. They, they recover very quickly. The strength gains you make when you're 16, 17, 18 happen anyway. Like you take a, it's a 15 year old and have him do nothing. And a year later, he's way stronger. So you turbocharge that with resistance training. And, but the challenge is, is, is making sure to, to, to direct it in the right place and have, cause I know, like I said, I've trained these kids and it's really easy, even for an experienced trainer to be like, Oh cool. We can add 10 pounds. Oh cool. You can do it. Wow. You hit a new PR and let the form go off by a couple degrees. Like that's the challenge. The challenge is, I got. It's like it's like growing a plant that's growing real fast. Let's make sure it grows straight before we allow it to just go crazy. Because you're right, you're setting the foundation. This is what what sets everything up in the future. Our next caller is Jennifer from Massachusetts. Hey Jennifer, how can we help you? Hey guys, I am really grateful for you taking the time for my call. I really appreciate it. Um, Sal, can I say one thing to you before we get started? Yeah, let's. Yeah, let me hear it. <laughs> um, can you please tell Jessica that I completely relate to her? I am celebrating 10 years of marriage to my 100% Sicilian husband. Mm. So um, when we go to family functions, I've never had to kiss so many people hello and goodbye <laughs> um, in my entire life. Yeah. Half of the time, I don't know people, but we always have to say hello and goodbye to everyone, which takes just about as much time as the whole event, I think, sometimes. Lots of noises as everybody's we're, eating. Wasn't it you and I just talking about this off air? We were. Like, literally, like, two days ago, Sal and I were talking about this off air because Katrina's family is much like his family, and it was like, and I'm the opposite. Our our family uh, doesn't see each other at all, and so it took me years to get used to that, yeah. uh, saying hi and goodbye and making sure I, I get every person at the party, regardless if I know who they are or not. Hey, but I tell you what, man, if you need family, you got a lot of people there. This is true. They, this will, is, they will die for you. This is true. I, I, I probably... Oh. Had a, the 100%. biggest baby shower ever. <laughs> it's worth it's worth it. It's worth it. So congratulations, you married oh. well. <laughs> Thanks. He's right. wonderful. He's uh, doing the mind pump programs That's as awesome. well. All right. So what's your question? How can we help you? Um. So my question. I was going to give you a little bit of backstory. Um. I always suffered with the scale, um, food issues. You know, typical um, female stuff. You know, I'd run around my backyard trying to burn 300 calories in a workout because I thought you know that was what I needed to do. About a year ago, I found you guys, which totally opened my eyes, um, which thank you. Um, I just listened to you. I binged every episode. I started researching, doing a ton of work on myself. And um, you guys really just taught me how food is great for your body, how to fuel my body, how to use the scale. So right now I am in an awesome place. You guys helped me get there. Um, so I'm a 45-year-old blessed stay-at-home mom. And I am just really happy where I'm at. I love my fitness routine. I just started Amabol anabolic advanced at home um, version, which thank you for making those programs available at home. Um, I walk my dog three to four miles a day. I do yoga a couple times here and there. I make sure that I do 20 minutes of mobility and stretching a day. I take my recovery really seriously. I track my sleep. Um, I'm just really I'm comfortable where I'm at. My maintenance calories is 2,600 calories. I'm 5'8", 139 pounds, 23% body fat. Um, and I just want to know, like, is it okay to stay here? Or do I Hell have yes. to go? Oh, and Hell not? yes. You're crushing it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, what, the, all what of us, are over, do you need all of us <laughs> over here are like shaking our head is like, where's the what question the hell, at? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. This where's is, where's the hook? you're in a beautiful <laughs> place right okay, now. Okay. So, and, and here's, the, here's the beauty of where you're at. Uh, forget the fact that you're obviously lean, you're fit, you, you look amazing, you're, you're consistent, you feel good. Forget that for a second. Do you enjoy your workouts? I love them. I'm okay. loving Annabelle. So it took me a hot minute to get to switch over to, to your um, programs. I was following a YouTube trainer. Don't give me shit, please. Um, but <laughs> I, so I'm doing anabolic now. I love it. And for, 
for a mom, those three minute rest periods are phenomenal. Do you know what I can get done in those three minute rest <laughs> periods? <laughs> They're awesome. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling great. I just didn't know. Do I ever, do I have to go into a cut in a book sometimes no. to no. Um, stimulate my metabolism? Like I know how to do it. You guys have taught me. Like if I, I know if I went down to 20% body fat, I'd see those see the abs that everybody now, wants. You are, I did no six are, pack. Um, I'm done two cycles of that. I've seen strength in my core. I mean, I, my husband finds me sexy as hell, probably more now than when I was 120 pounds. I'm 139 pounds right now. Uh, that's the um, true measure right there. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah. you know what, Jennifer? Okay. This is such a, <laughs> this is such a good place to be because well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quote that I say all the time. The man who loves walking is going to walk much further than the man who is only walking to a destination. So, in other words, I've never heard you say you're that. You're in. I've said that before. <laughs> yeah. We the fucking say that all the time. I don't even know what he's talking about. He's full of shit. He never said that before. Doug knows. He knows. He'll shake his head. <laughs> Look, There's the eyebrow. Even Doug's he like, I've never heard that quote. I say it all the time. <laughs> hey, listen. Go I ahead and finish it. It was no, beautiful. No. It was beautiful. Here's, here's beautiful. the deal. <laughs> this this is this is how you know you're going to be consistent forever. You enjoy what you're doing. Now, as far as the bulk and the cut is concerned. Don't worry about that. It'll ha at some point you're gonna be like, hey, I yeah, feel like a, I want to get a little stronger. You're gonna have a Vegas trip come up yeah, soon. Hey, you know I, I feel Something like I like want that. more stamina. Hey, I feel like I want more strength in the squad, or maybe I want more mobility. And then you just follow that, follow that feeling. But you don't have to have a goal. This is see, one of the problems with having a goal. And there's and there's there's positives and negatives to it. But one of the negatives is people get so focused on the goal that when they finally get to the goal, they're like, now what? What do I do now? Where do I go from here? So you're in this excellent, amazing place. Just enjoy what you're doing. This is like the this is where we try to get people to to get to. Yeah, so you're the, doing great. Yeah, the only thing that I would ever probably change up with you is uh is the programming every once in a while. So and it acts how we wrote them. We wrote them with that intention, follow anabolic for three months. After you do that, move into performance or strong or aesthetic or one of the other ones. And, you know, so you're learning new movements and exercises. You're hitting different planes. So you're getting stronger with all those things and, and you're constantly kind of changing it up. So the body's not adapt. It doesn't get so used to anabolic that you start to see a diminishing returns. But other than that, where you're, I mean, 2,600 calories is a great place to be for your size. That is uh, a, a good metabolism. So there's not a, and you're, you're incorporating yoga, you're walking, you're getting stronger. You like the way and, you and look you and feel. And you enjoy it. You're yeah. enjoying the process. It's, That's it literally is such a perfect place to be in. And I'm with Sal, something will naturally happen over the course of, you know, the year where, you know, maybe you got something coming up where like I said, Vegas, maybe it's not Vegas, maybe it's just something you're going to do and you want to be leaner. So you run into a calorie deficit for a little while, or maybe it's winter time and where you're enjoying some of the Thanksgiving foods and some of that. So you naturally kind of go on a bulk a little bit, but you're in a very beautiful place that I think we, we are striving to get most of our clients to. Yeah. Just, just literally just keep enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. This is perfect. Just embrace Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. We have uh, anabolic performance aesthetic. Oh, there you go. Uh, we have all of that stuff. Um, I'm in your private forum. We have the no uh, BS six pack. So I have all those things that I can interchange throughout the year. That's so. perfect. We'll just uh, give you a virtual high five then. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer, <laughs> you, you're doing great. I, this, uh, this kind of question really makes me happy. So I'm, I'm happy you're where Oh, you're thank at. you. And if I could just say one more thing to all of you guys, and if I get emotional, I'm sorry, but I just wanted to articulate to you guys um, something that I hope you guys realize. When I had my daughter, I was terrified I was going to pass down my body image issues, my issues with food. Even though I consciously tried not to do this, it was inevitable just at the place I was at. As all of you have helped me change my mindset, all of you helped me get to a damn good place, and that fear is now gone. My daughter brings some home papers from home paper from school, and she writes about herself. And I see her write, "I am strong. I am kind." Oh. My heart bursts with happiness. Nowhere is there the word skinny, thin, none of that. She makes me cards and says, "I want to be strong like my mama." So from a person who values being a mother over anything else in this world, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. God, God we bless really you. really are Jennifer. changing lives and are not saying, and I'm not saying that to be corny. It is genuine for me. Please know you are truly making an impact on lives and you are, you are all kind, compassionate souls. And it comes through your podcast. So when you hear the name Alexander Ruggieri, that's my daughter, you know that you had a tiny part in helping her make her the badass that she's going to be. So thank you. 
Th- thank you. God bless That's you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, you got, <laughs> there we go. You got, all, you got, you got, got all of us over here, down. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Oh, yeah, it's Jennifer. powerful. Yeah, Jennifer, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, you're all just very kind people. So thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Happy you, holidays. You too. You too. God, it doesn't take me a second. I know. Give me a myself. second. Did I, I, I had to like look away because if I was listening and focusing on what we were I couldn't doing, make I eye start, contact yeah. with you guys. Yeah. If you cry, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I look at the ceiling. That's, that's uh, you know, what a, what a great place to be. You know, it takes a long time sometimes for people to get this place, but where they enjoy the process and they're like, you know, I don't need to have a specific goal. I just love doing this and I feel good. And, yeah. and then the question arises, am, should I go back to what I was doing before? Which is kind of what she was asking, right? Yeah, is, this, yeah. is it okay to stay here? No, it's more than okay. This is the best place to be. And uh, boy, what she said at the end, man. As, as yeah, a parent. I mean, we hope for this for most people to get to this point. It's, it's. I mean, that's what we do. We, we try and get our clients to to get to this place where you can navigate and you know what to do and, and apply things and you enjoy the process. Enjoying the process is everything. And the truth is it's it's <clears throat> it's not easy. It's There's a lot of work and a lot of the work is internal. It's not just X's and O's. Oh, it's geez. just not... These are my macros. This is the best program. Follow it. There's normally a lot of internal work that needs to be done. And obviously she's done that journey. And, you know, it's so cool to, to see when someone's put the work in to see it pay off like this. And she is in an amazing place. So, Jennifer, we love you. Thank you. Yep. Look, if you like our information, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. The best part is they're free. Mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. <laughs>